good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks for being here after the social dinner yesterday. <laughs> I imagine it could be tough. So uh, without further ado, I would like to start this session that is about international collaboration for excellence in science and the opportunities and challenges. So, um, no. Uh, so can, can you move the, to the next slide, please? Because I can't do this for now. Okay, thanks. So uh, today we have three um, different keynote speeches. Uh, the first one is from Giuseppe La Rocca, who is Community Support uh, Manager at EGI, at the EGI Foundation. And it's about EGI support for global science approaches and experiences. Uh, the second talk is from Jian Hui Li, uh, from uh, the um, Chinese Academy of Science, about CST Cloud and EGI cooperation towards the Global Open Science Cloud. And the third speech is, about Eric, is from Eric Yen from the Academia Sinica Great Computing Center in Taiwan uh, about Asia regional collaboration on disaster mitigation in agriculture. So the session today aims at giving uh, an overview of the actual challenges, the, the status of the international collaboration and the way forward. So um, I'm very happy to invite Giuseppe. So. Thank you and good morning everyone. Okay, so I'm uh, Giuseppe La Rocca. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Community Support Team Leader at EGI Foundation, and today with this talk, I would like to briefly uh, introduce how EGI is uh, planning to support global open science. Okay, so let's move. Um, okay, so I would like to start with this picture, which will show you the global challenges we have in front of us. So the 21st century research, of, in order to address these challenges that are global, require uh, a paradigm shift, so we need to change a bit the way we do research. We need to stop uh, doing uh, uh, work in a silos, as you know. So we need to do uh, we need to do um, collaborative work, so share know-how and expertise, but also we need uh, modern infrastructure and also advanced. Uh, solution for helping a researcher to address these new challenges. So uh, open science and support open science is in such a way um, in the EGI DNA. So the vision of EGI is to allow researcher to uh, provide access to uh, access, uh, distributed access offered by the infrastructure in a seamless way. Uh, give them a possibility to run uh, secure data, to access uh, secure data, um, run uh, computing analysis, etc. So, in order to implement this vision, uh, the mission of VJ Federation is to develop advanced solution uh, in order to allow uh, to a researcher to implement and support cutting-edge research, innovation, and knowledge transfer. So this is uh, the main mission of uh, the Federation, and uh, all the partners of this Federation are working in order to achieve this mission. While the mission of the Foundation, the, the, this non-for-profit organization established in the in, uh, Netherlands, is to uh, maintain uh, this Federation on behalf of the member states, and also offer uh, the solution for supporting uh, uh, research and innovation. So, um, from a historical point of view, this uh, uh, infrastructure was set up in 2010. So originally we supported the WCG experiment at CERN. Uh, and in this collaboration, EGI played a very key role because we not only supported uh, the experiments offering the capacity in order to generate scientific data from the raw data extracted from the detector, but we also provide the core services, for example, the accounting, the monitoring, solution for helping the community, the experiment to uh, run their uh, challenges uh, and achieve some result. This collaboration, as you know, contributed uh, brought to the achie important achievement in 2013. There was uh, this Nobel Prize for Physics, for physics that was uh, uh, gave, gave to um, uh, important uh, uh, scientists and of course EGI uh, was uh, uh, contributed a lot to achieve this result. Since 2010, we are now supporting uh, a lot of uh, new communities from uh, different scientific domains, from Virgo, uh, IceCube, Structural Biology, and many, many others. I will present some examples of this collaboration in the last part of my talk. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> how EGI support global science? So basically, um, um, 
this is done through different activities, let's say. So the first one is um, try to uh, increase the member of the federation. So what we are trying to do um, over the year is to try to identify new organization, uh, research institutes that are interested to share with us uh, the vision we have to support science. And uh, this week in Prague, we welcome two new partners uh, that are the Hakonet and the University of Vilnius. So they are now part of our federation, of our club, and uh, now we can work together also to support these uh, additional community coming from, uh, from these uh, new partners. So up to now, we have uh, 28 different partners. This year, we welcome two new members. Last year, we have additional four. So we are quite happy to increase this uh, federation and hopefully we would like to continue to increase also uh, in, the next, uh, in the next year. Uh, beside this, we are also running a very intensive uh, international partnership programs. So what we want to do is try to uh, establish collaboration, not only in Europe, but also uh, outside. Uh, most of the federation, as you know, is composed by provider, distributed provider in Europe, but thanks to these uh, international programs, we are, uh, we are now able to uh, we establish a collaboration with other peer infrastructure in other regions. So we have a collaboration with the US, with the Open Science Grid, but also with the Canada, Latin American countries, and many others. So thanks to this program, we are now able to um, address additional requirements and support a wider user base. If you want to get more information, after the break, there are two uh, workshops, the Glo uh, GOSC workshop, where my colleagues will uh, update you about the status of this collaboration. So if you want to get more information, you are invited to participate. Uh, we are not only interested in, in uh, established collaboration with the peer infrastructure. We are also uh, working with the community, of course, because this is one of the most important uh, stakeholders for EGI. So, um, especially with the, for a community with the long-term plan, um, research infrastructure, in particular the ones in uh, the S3 roadmap, we are able to uh, propose this uh, research community partnership where we agree together a joint activity that we like to develop together. So, um, some cases we also complement this with the service level agreement. So, we manage to uh, allocate a capacity for supporting the need of the community, identify a uh, resource provider interested to provide support. And we are also um, uh, particularly active to establish connection with the uh, company and SME. So we are able to offer this uh, business partnership. And uh, uh, this week, uh, Elisa introduced the uh, EGI Digital Innovation Hub, where this activity will, uh, will be uh, supported. And last but not least, uh, we are also able to offer technical partnership with uh, 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 provider interested to deploy new services or new solution on our infrastructure. So it's a quite intensive in, in partnership program, as you see. And uh, thanks to this uh, collaboration that EGI established over the year, we are able now to support a different community, different needs, and we are quite uh, satisfied about this. So uh, another important activity to support the global open science is uh, to run these uh, technical integration activities. So in particular, uh, in the framework of EGI ACE, this uh, flagship project led by, led by EGI, we are promoting these uh, uh, cloud integration programs. Uh, so as part of this program, we are inviting the national cloud provider to at least complete the integration with this um, uh, three main EGI services. So the first one is check-in, the authentication authorization services, because we would like to offer the possibility for the user, national user, to use their identity to access the infrastructure operated by EGI. The second one is uh, uh, Data Hub, uh, the solution developed by Cypronet. So the idea here is to allow the national provider to pull and push data set available in uh, Data Hub. Uh, which can be relevant for the national uh, community. Um, and the last one is the application database. Uh, in this case, the possibility for uh, interacting with these services to pull or push uh, application or software uh, in the form of virtual appliance. So thanks to these integration, um, cloud integration programs, EGI is able to federate all the different uh, national providers that are supported by national fundings, 
Uh, and uh, uh, on top of it, we are able to uh, run this uh, matchmaking, so we are able to collect the requirement of different uh, community that you can see here on the top, and based on this requirement, identify the, the best uh, uh, provider and allocate the capacity for supporting this uh, use case. Um, this is not the, uh, the end of the story because uh, Hijai is also interested and also is uh, over the last year is also uh, trying to promote solution for supporting open science. So we have a dedicated instance of uh, Jupyter Notebooks based on Jupyter Lab and the binder instance which are basically a common playground where a researcher can uh, uh, run a scientific analysis using this web interface and uh, in the end uh, can share uh, this result sorry with uh, oops. okay so they can use this uh, um, web interface to run analysis on the data set that can be exposed by for example uh, data hub and uh, replicate this analysis with other colleagues working on the same uh, area using the binary instance uh, there is, a, uh, for those of you that may be interested, there is an important tutorial on Friday morning. So, and all will uh, introduce this uh, technology. So, if you are interested, I will invite you to participate. So, EJ is operating these two instances, this uh, notebook and binder, but uh, um, this instance can be also replicated in other uh, national uh, cloud providers. So, if this is uh, the case, for example, we can uh, uh, give you the recipe or we can do these jobs on our side, from our, um, if, um, on our, um, we, EGI can also do this kind of activities or replicate the configuration if you want to uh, have a dedicated uh, setup for your community. Uh, recently, for example, we discussed with Eric, so the idea is to have a dedicated setup like this one also for the community in Asia Pacific. So something like that will be sooner be available for the disaster mitigation and agriculture. Okay, so now in the last part of my presentation, I will briefly uh, report some uh, um, example of community uh, that we are supporting. So community with a, a global uh, scope and uh, that want to address uh, uh, open, uh, global uh, challenges. So the first one I would like to report is um, the structural biology community from Winemar. Uh, so the uh, main challenges of this community is to uh, study the molecules of life. So basically what they want to do is to understand if uh, um, a possible uh, alteration of their structure, uh, how this uh, alteration can affect their, uh, their functionality. So, um, this, the support of this community started a long time ago with the different uh, FP6 and FP7 project and uh, the collaboration with DJI is, uh, started more or less in uh, 2007, so it's a long time ago now. Uh, we are quite happy to uh, work with this community. What we are doing in practice is not only to uh, offer the um, resources for uh, helping the community to operate their portals, and uh, help the researcher to scale up uh, the computing analysis, but uh, advanced solution for helping the, to facilitate the access to the infrastructure with the check-in, and also a uh, solution to uh, orchestrate and dispatch uh, uh, scientific jobs on uh, EGI infrastructure. So the community, uh, such a biology community, is quite big. Uh, there are up since the beginning up to now more than 31,000 of uh, researchers across uh, more than 136 uh, countries. As you can see, most of them are from the US and China. Uh, and uh, they are consuming a lot of CPU hour, not only HTC, but also cloud computing. Um, this infrastructure, this, uh, um, the, 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 the community are operating uh, uh, different services and some of them are also used for training activities. Recently, um, there is also uh, the possibilities of, for some uh, students at the university to use these uh, uh, portal, let's say, thematic services for running uh, uh, university courses. Um, okay, the thematic services uh, now are available in the OSC portal. So it is possible through the portal operated by EOSC to navigate and discover uh, the solution developed by this community, for example. You see here that uh, um, some of them are 
available in this page and the access is open so you can just uh, uh, click on uh, access and uh, most of the, the services are, as I said, the open access, so you just need to log in and, um, and you are able to access the portal and uh, run your analysis. One of the most important one is uh, ad hoc. This is a solution developed by University of Utrecht, uh, which aims to study the interaction between uh, uh, viruses and uh, human proteins. This uh, solution was widely used during the COVID pandemic, with, during the pandemic, because a lot of users requested access to these services. So uh, EGI collaborated with this community. They provided extra capacity thanks to the collaboration with the uh, Open Science Grid. Uh, the, the user were able also to uh, use the additional capacity offered by Open Science Grid. And uh, additional work was also done in order to uh, improve the uh, front end because uh, uh, the idea was to offer the possibility to tag special jobs uh, to be executed. And um, yeah, uh, another example that uh, recently we started to collaborate is IceCube. So this is the neutrino experiment. Uh, the main objective of uh, this community is to uh, observe the cosmic ray um, interaction. Uh, with the Earth environment, and uh, based on this information, try to address important questions like, for example, the origin of uh, ma dark matter and also the uh, properties of the neutrino. So also in this case, this is a quite big uh, collaboration. Uh, the, there are more than 300 physicists from uh, 53 different institutes, and what we are doing um, in practice is uh, uh, to support their um, scientific challenges because uh, with the upgrade of their facility now they are uh, looking for additional capacity. So uh, we are uh, contributing to this uh, resource pool offering extra GPU resources to this collaboration and now we are also trying to finalize with them a, a collaboration agreement. So we have a memorandum of understanding uh, where we identify a couple of areas of common interest including the federated AI uh, counting and help desk. So this is still in progress, but uh, hopefully we can uh, finalize this uh, soon. Um, so um, from a technical perspective, so uh, there are two different uh, providers of the Federation. One is uh, the Czech Republic uh, cloud provider, Chesnet, and uh, the second one is uh, IFCA from Spain that are offering uh, additional resources for this pool. And uh, uh, there is this HTC Condor used by the community to run jobs on this infrastructure. Uh, we recently, we agreed that this uh, service level agreement, so the two providers are able to offer the capacity requested, and uh, you see here below the accounting uh, uh, cl collected so far in 2022. Um, the last example is um, about uh, EMSO. This is the European Multidisciplinary Seafloor and uh, Water Column Observatory. We also, in this case, we established this collaboration a long time ago. The, the community is basically exploring the status of the oceans. So they want to get inside from this analysis and understand if the, uh, this phenomena can also have an impact on the uh, global uh, Earth system. So they have a lot of stations that are uh, deployed in the sea. And the main important component of this uh, community is uh, represented by this uh, data management platform that basically is responsible to collect all these um, data set from the stations. And before to offer this data to the main stakeholders that can be community, industry, etc., they uh, harmonize this data set uh, and offer access to this data set uh, with the API and also web interface. So EGI is offering uh, the, the, the solution, the capacity for uh, hosting this data uh, management platform on uh, our infrastructure. There are two providers here, you see INFN and Cesga that are offering the capacity. And thanks to this uh, collaboration now, this uh, platform is uh, uh, moving from pre-production to production. So uh, this is one of the use cases we are supporting in EGI ACE uh, uh, project. And uh, yeah, um, if you want to get more information, okay, this is my last slide. There are a lot of uh, details available in our website, publication. You see also uh, here, um, we have some newsletter on the table if you want, you can have a look and take one. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of success story and uh, um, from where you can uh, uh, get additional information. And uh, that's all, I think this is my last slide. Yes, thank you, thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much, Giuseppe, for the overview and also for keeping the time. Did you want to add anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, if there are no questions from the audience now, we can take them later. And uh, I would like to check with the uh, technical support if the, the remote speaker is online. Okay, great. So we can start his presentation then, whenever he's ready. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I, I remember actually, uh, so we will start at this session when, at now or? Yes, we, uh, you, we are already in the session, so you can start your presentation whenever you like. Oh, you mean I, will, I can start my presentation now? Yes. Okay, I will start and I give a presentation I have to leave and uh, so can I, I will, uh, share my screen, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Stop. Yes. So I, I will, can, can I start? All good. Okay, thank you, thank everyone. And um, so it's it's my uh, pleasure to give a, a, a talk about our cooperation with uh, EGI. Firstly, I will uh, use several minutes to introduce our uh, organization, the Computer Network Information Center. And uh, this uh, we uh, uh, call it CNIC. CNIC is a special research institute of uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So we are uh, actually uh, responsible for the uh, uh, design and development of the uh, uh, science research, uh, research infrastructure, and uh, actually uh, we uh, as for as for the e infrastructure in CAS, it includes three pillars. The first one, the uh, China Science and Technology Network, we call it CISNet. So this is uh, this network actually had a hybrid, a uh, high um, bandwidth with uh, link with the. Uh, the world, for example, the, uh, the link with the US and the link with the U European. Uh, so we have a, a, a one a 10 gig, uh, 10 gig uh, uh, link with the uh, Geon. So in the, uh, 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 so it, it also has uh, 12 branches across China. So this network actually link all the uh, research infrastructures, the research uh, the, the institutions and the uh, um, big science facilities and so on. So the uh, second one is the computing uh, facilities. We, uh, we are actually we developed a Chinese national grid. So this grid connect uh, 19 uh, supercomputing centers and then in CAS, we also wish uh, build a CAS supercomputer grid environment to provide service for our scientists. And the uh, third one is the scientific data. In, in China, the uh, China government funded uh, 20 uh, scientific data centers. There are uh, 11 located in CAS. So, um, so we actually, all this infrastructure, the development and the design most uh, 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 by uh, CNIC. So we, we, our responsibility is to, you know, to, uh, to make uh, these infrastructures uh, involved and uh, to provide service to our scientists uh, in case. So, uh, in order to provide integrated service for our scientists, so we started a, a program called the, the, to build a new platform we call the China Science and Technology Cloud. So it starts 2017 uh, and now continued uh, funded by CAS. So, uh, sorry. And uh, it's uh, this uh, uh, cloud is fully support multidisciplinary open scientific researches. Uh, so you, you can see, so we, we integrate the service uh, except for the sp high speed network and the computing resources and the massive data storage. Uh, so our, this uh, infrastructure never, never, we also 
we uh, integrate some uh, the scientific research, the algorithm, the, the tools, software, the, and the data and the information. And this, so, uh, so we, uh, uh, there are three uh, uh, target user types users for the member one the research is scientists. They will f- uh, try to find their service from this platform. And we also provide services for the service provider. We uh, try to integrate the uh, services. So if you, if, if you want to publish the service and let more people can use, so you will, you will try to you know, register your service in our platform and we can uh, you know, uh, monitor your service and uh, uh, provide some manage- management service for you. And uh, we also, we uh, try to cooperate with the resource owners. So they will, they, they will you know, uh, as uh, they will integrate their cloud computing facility or even high, high performance uh, computing facility. So, uh, so this is a very uh, high level uh, uh, service cat- category for the uh, infrastructure level and the platform level and some of the uh, uh, software as service and so on. And so this is now uh, the service capacity for you know, the infrastructure uh, level, so computing facility storage, and uh, there are more than uh, one petabyte that can be accessed and download from this platform and also uh, 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 10, uh, 1000 research softwares. Um, so we uh, provide service for many, many uh, uh, scientific scientific uh, activities, uh, events. So this this is a this many is a, uh, uh, big science facilities. They produce huge data, and they will you know analyze this huge huge data from their uh, from their, their their facilities. For example, this is uh, astronomy. And uh, else, else, else science and uh, some, some, uh, some, uh, you know, the physics and so on. So we wish uh, connecting our CC cloud with the world. So we had, uh, uh, you know, a, a vision to make a cross continental federated e infrastructure with all the uh, partners in the world. So the first one is we uh, we we are very happy to have a concrete co- cooperation with EGI. Uh, after two years uh, cooperation and we test, uh, technical tests, so we actually made a federation test bed we called across uh, China and the European uh, uh, Federation test bed. So our uh, checking, our AI system actually connect with each AI checking systems. So our uh, cloud, I mean, the OpenStack clusters can be, you know, uh, uh, federated with EGI, EGI's cloud systems. So the users can, uh, can access our, uh, our cloud environment and use our environment. So um, by now, and so it, 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 the technical solution has been verified. It, it, we think it's okay. And now you're ready to use. And uh, uh, some of the, uh, the uh, you know, some of the, uh, scientists, the corporation, the, the international corporation, uh, 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 try to uh, use this uh, uh, this service, this platform. But by now, to be frankly, I think the shared resources are limited. So we need more uh, resources. In our side, we, we are trying to make uh, uh, make uh, add more uh, uh, computing facility and uh, to this uh, test bed. And we also wish in each I side they can also uh, you know uh, have more a resource to uh, add to this uh, test bed. Make it can be a provide service for for the European scientists and even the Chinese scientists. So this is one typical use case three D radar. So in China, so uh, we had we we are building a, a, a radio a, a Sanya. A, uh, radio uh, uh, systems and the European there are uh, uh, East card. So these two systems, they will try to know best this, uh, use this federation service to do some data uh, federated analysis and even to do more corporations. So this is actually the technical framework we tested now. It, it's it's tried to, 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 to provide services. So, you know, um, 
we uh, we offer some uh, federal uh, uh, cloud resources and EGI uh, also, and then we use the uh, direct uh, to to do job uh, management and so so we provide a a, a, X, a portal or a surface portal we call it as the best on the, the Jupiter Hub and the, so now it 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 it, it try to uh, provide service now and the the, the two uh, cooperation. Uh, scientific uh, uh, science uh, groups, one in uh, CAS, one institute, and the other in uh, European, they try to, you know, to uh, to use it to do some cooperation to do the data analysis and even to uh, to have more cooperation based on these two similar facilities. I think it's a very, very uh, impressive uh, use case to test our uh, technical platform. And uh, um, for the future, uh, we we uh, EGI and the uh, and the uh, CIC and even we even the uh, code and the any and other partners, we try to uh, to uh, to to move the platform uh, uh, federated as global ne never. We called uh, we started a, a new initiative. We called the Global Open Science Cloud. So uh, in UNESCO uh, recommendations, the they, they, this is the, the, the descriptions, open science infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure should be federated, accessible, internationally interconnected and in, interoperable. So the GEOSC initiative is try to connect various institutional, national and the regional initiatives and try to name the Foundation for Cross-Continental Federated Open Science and the Fair Infrastructure and the Virtual Research Environment. So, um, so we, as for the uh, expected, expected deliverables, it should be, we will try cooperate to establish a robust network of trusted research infrastructure to connect research resources and all stakeholders to enable in, uh, science discovery in the dynamically involving global open science environment. So we wish in the future, we, we can have cooperation, more uh, EGI and the CIC, CODETA and any other uh, key uh, 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 partners try to make a, a cross continental federated infrastructure and the virtual research environment for the global corporations. That means we have to have to 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 have many barriers and the technical barriers or even policy barriers and the, you know the governance barriers. We need to we try to have more. Uh, 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 we can we can try to you know to uh, cooperate to define some uh, the, uh, some uh, interoperable products make our uh, platforms federation become more uh, transparent and uh, more easier so not uh, so, so it's 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 it's, it's dynamic and then we also we can harmonize our policies to make our uh, resources data and resource can be you know uh, really uh, shared and uh, maybe uh, exchanged and uh, we can try to uh, provide transparent service to the user communities, science communities, it's easy for them to integrate the different services for their, uh, for their uh, cooperation. And we, we wish we, we have to also to find a sustainable mechanics, the win-win uh, mechanics for each platforms. So we, we have to, we, we can offer some resources, offer and the, we will also get something, so that will be, uh, you know, a good uh, feedback for uh, a reward system for our uh, partners to make it uh, actually can provide service sustainably. So uh, in the future, uh, I think we had a very good start with EGI in these two years. We, we wish we in the in the next two or five years we can try to make our. Uh, vision um, realities. So we, we um, so I think that now uh, it's just a beginning. Uh, we have to keep it together in the future, uh, working together, and uh, that that all. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, each I 
uh, and uh, we are happy to have two years uh, cooperation with you. We wish in the next uh, uh, next year or next uh, two or three years, we we really try to uh, can can build a a a, 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 a platform a federated platform to provide service to our scientists in China and your scientists in Europe to have them have more uh, corporations to do their uh, very uh, to do their better science. So uh, thank you for your uh, attention, that all. I hope you could hear the applauses from the audience. Um, so thank you so much for, uh, for giving us this very interesting presentation. And as I'm aware that you can't stay with us until the end of the, of the session, I would like to ask uh, if anybody from the audience has any questions. Oops. Oh, Tiziana. Thanks. Xin Hui, uh, good morning here in Europe. Thanks for being in this, in this session. I have a question for you, um, which is um, besides the scientific uh, international collaborations that you already highlighted, what are the new collaborations that uh, you think we should uh, jointly tackle and support in the coming two to four years? Uh, thank you, uh, Tizana. Thank you very much. So, uh, in uh, my in our side, uh, actually, we wish we we, we follow our uh, test by test bed. We wish we can make our test bed can provide service, and uh, then we can try to uh, find uh, uh, more use case to test it. And uh, I, in my mind, I really think uh, uh, if each I can uh, 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 cooperate with us and even the other partners to try to make a global open science cloud uh, test bed to, you know, uh, to test uh, whether our idea uh, is work for uh, you know for not only in Europe, uh, for China or for even for uh, the East Asian countries and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and some Africa uh, countries. So and the second one is uh, we I think maybe EGI and uh, I we can try to have more training uh, workshops. To training the uh, you know the users or the uh, partners in uh, Africa or East uh, Asia, and to uh, and uh, I I really hope maybe uh, we, we we will offer some resources for example the computing resource the maybe the uh, storage resource even data and. Uh, I really wish uh, in your side, EGI can also offer some, uh, you know, resource. And I also talked with Ali Cloud. They promised they will offer some uh, some commercial free, uh, commercial uh, uh, cloud service, but it's free for us to test and even to provide service uh, to the uh, uh, Africa uh, users or even to the East Asia uh, users. So we sh we we really. We can put some resources. We can try to find more resources to build a test bed. This test bed just not test the technique, but we can try to provide a service and have some use case to use it to 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 you know to make this the just uh, idea not an idea. It's a, a platform. It can provide service. And the science community think, oh, yeah, it's valuable. It's 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 a good uh, uh, service for us. So this is my rough idea. So <laughs> thank you, uh, Tizana. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think we also agree that the training is key and um, uh, pursuing over the long term this uh, consolidation uh, is important. Um, I have to say that. Um, as you know, for the EGI Federation, operating with international partners 
is already an activity that we have been pursuing uh, in the last 10 years and was very successful thanks to the leadership, for example, of AESGC, uh, but also in South Africa and also th and in the United States and Latin America. And this was strongly driven by scientific communities. So perhaps my addition to what you said, which we completely support, is that having also scientific collaborations actively engaged in the early stages of their designs is important to make sure that they are also in the driving seat, that they can drive development to the extent this is necessary for their science. Thank you. OK, OK, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tiziana. Um, yeah, you're gay. So thank Good. you. I have the yeah. job of having another, another meeting. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> then I will ask it later at <laughs> some other time. Thank you. Okay, too late, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, then uh, thanks, Tiziana, for the question that you was able to <laughs> ask to Changhui. And then, Eric, I can give you the microphone. Thanks. Thank you so much. And thanks to the invitation from EGI. I'm Eric Yan from Academic Sinica Grid Computing Center in Taiwan, reporting the status of the uh, collaboration on disaster mitigation and agriculture, which is uh, the uh, data space in the uh, EGIS project. Uh, so on behalf of the collaborations, <coughs> apparently we share the common vision with EGI. All the uh, 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 this uh, <coughs> collaboration is about the sustainability, uh, exactly as what uh, Giuseppe mentioned at first. <coughs> the collaboration in Asia <coughs> is trying to uh, minimize the risk and impacts of the natural hazards in Asia because that's the uh, one of the most common concern in almost every Asia countries, and. Uh, <coughs> The collaboration aims to, to develop the uh, uh, capacity for uh, risk analysis based on the uh, deeper understanding to the uh, physics behind the hazards and also based on the uh, scientific improved scientific computing <coughs> uh, supported by the uh, uh, scientific clouds such as EGI technologies <coughs> and also uh, based on the requirements from the, all the uh, user communities both the uh, infrastructure, the services, and also the sciences uh, could be uh, improved. Some of the background is that <coughs> uh, right now we are part of the uh, uh, data space, as I mentioned, in the uh, EGIS project. Actually, <coughs> the Disaster Mitigation Competence Center was uh, supported and initiated in the EGI Engage in about 2015. And before that, this collaboration was initiated in, in 2008 by the project uh, EU Asia Greek, which is very helpful to uh, have this collaboration in Asia uh, getting started uh, from uh, about uh, almost 10 years before. So uh, as I mentioned, the objective is to build up the capacity of the uh, hazard risk analysis. And the uh, engagement of the local user community is uh, one of the key missions in this collaboration. And we hope, based on such uh, common requirements, we can facilitate the regional collaboration and also uh, resource uh, sharing uh, <coughs> based on the regional infrastructure and build up by the interoperable uh, infrastructure uh, with the EGI uh, services. So expected outcome is that <coughs> All the case study could be reproducible. And in later slides, I will show you some of the uh, case studies. And we are uh, <coughs> built up the catalog of the uh, shared resources uh, from the uh, use case as well, including the data, the uh, services, the tools, uh, algorithm, everything about the case study. And those are the scientists, <coughs> the uh, experts, uh, uh, the linkage of the scientists, uh, domain scientists, the very uh, key in this collaboration. And of course, the uh, training <coughs> and also the promoting activities, including the uh, workshop, educational uh, activities, master class, et cetera. And uh, <coughs> through the uh, original collaboration framework, such as the APEN, IGC, ASEAN, 
uh, and also uh, <coughs> project-based uh, events in Asia are also uh, one of the uh, uh, primary activities. <coughs> Deeper understanding approach, as I mentioned, <coughs> we need to uh, investigate and uh, to have deeper understanding of the, uh, 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 the physics behind the hazards and also the drive, drivers of the uh, uh, hazards. So uh, <coughs> with the uh, uh, help from the domain scientists, for each case study, uh, we can uh, <coughs> discover the new signs from the, uh, each hazards to understand more about the Earth systems, <coughs> for example. And then based on such knowledge, the uh, scientific simulation, <coughs> the numerical simulation of the hazards could be improved. Uh, for example, the weather simulation, the, the simulation of the tsunami wave propagation, etc. So in the beginning, <coughs> once the uh, case study has been confirmed, uh, together with the uh, domain scientists and the, the local user communities, and then <coughs> the, uh, the first question is uh, how to get the required data. Observation data is always the first barrier because most of the data are owned by the government agencies. <coughs> so there are many uh, uh, potential uh, bureaucratic uh, processes and also uh, different challenges uh, <coughs> in negotiation uh, with different uh, 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 institutes. <coughs> for example, for the weather simulation, the uh, Doppler data is the best uh, data set we need <coughs> uh, in general but it's, it's quite uh, difficult to get such good data. So luckily we've been uh, <coughs> uh, having uh, several uh, such case study about extreme weather. And then <coughs> with that uh, data collected and also the background information of the hazard has been collected, has been in place. And then sci scientists group could work on <coughs> the solution, how to improve the accuracy and the performance of the simulation, which might be a, uh, uh, repeated uh, uh, re uh, uh, workflow to fine-tune the uh, uh, results until it's uh, uh, really improved. And then, of course, the uh, high-performance computing infrastructure would help. And then in the end, <coughs> we hope that uh, based on the, uh, uh, <coughs> the case study, the simulation portal could be also one of the outcomes and then later other users or other use cases could make use of the same improved simulation facility to have better results in different case studies in different uh, countries for different uh, uh, partners. So that's the basic idea of the deep, deeper understanding approach. Actually from uh, <coughs> early tw uh, 2010, uh, in the, uh, before the COVID, uh, from uh, 2015 to 2020, we've been uh, conducted and also <coughs> finished about uh, 18 case studies of uh, <coughs> several types of hazard. For example, the typhoon, storm surge, dust transportation, the flood, uh, fire monitoring, lightning, etc. So, uh, <coughs> from one of our uh, leading scientists in, from Malaysia, uh, he mentioned that like, the uh, value of the case study. Uh, <coughs> focusing on the weather-related uh, uh, cases. It's an in integral component to improve the weather forecast and could reveal the uh, uh, process that were not understood previously. And also assist in future uh, field program, sorry, field program and also numerical experiment design, uh, which is, <coughs> is very, very helpful for, for the uh, science and also for the uh, 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 education. So with this deep, deeper understanding in summary, we are uh, translate evolving scientific advancement in, into accurate numerical simulation uh, to understand the trends of the changes of hazard impacts, develop risk analysis and mitigation capability, build up the uh, dynamic collaboration model of all parties to improve the infrastructure to support all these activities based on such uh, real requirements. So the plan is to have more case study conducted of various types of hazards in different countries <coughs> based on the requirements from different partners. And <coughs> uh, we hope to have more data analysis measures and also simulation portal could be uh, uh, released in the future. Yeah. 
And here is a summary of the, those uh, <coughs> about uh, 20K studies. Uh, <coughs> and in the first column, uh, that's the uh, leader <coughs> of the uh, domain scientist, other than Taiwan, <coughs> in charge of the uh, uh, tsunami, storm surge, dust transportation. We also have a uh, scientist uh, from uh, Malaysia now is a uh, supporting flooding case in Myanmar, uh, Bangladesh, and also uh, uh, Southeast Asia countries. We have Thailand uh, leading the uh, uh, monitoring of the file haze uh, uh, project. And <coughs> a new uh, requirements from Bangladesh is about lightning because every year the lightning events killed hundreds of people in that country. But <clears throat> the problem is that the observ observation data is still the uh, uh, first barrier uh, for the case, case analysis. <clears throat> so in the following slide, there are some of the examples from uh, those 18 uh, case study which has been achieved. Uh, <clears throat> the first one is about uh, super, super typhoon Haiyan happened in 2013, which killed thousands of people in Philippines. But <clears throat> the real cause for the life losses there is not by typhoon itself uh, get, uh, directly, it's because of the storm surge induced by the typhoon. And <clears throat> usually it's very difficult for such super typhoon from the simulation, uh, numerical simulation to achieve the uh, lowest pressure or the strongest wind speed. Uh, that's a, a barrier. So from this case, <coughs> from the study of the domain scientist, we improved the uh, uh, vertical wind field stru structure and the, also the eye wall contraction uh, for the Typhoon Haiyan. And then we can improve the accuracy of the numerical simulations. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, <coughs> the other thing is that uh, from, uh, uh, because it's uh, caused by Typhoon and also storm surge, so in this case study, we integrate the uh, atmospheric model and also the oceanic model together. So the simulation could be started from the uh, <coughs> birth of the typhoon and also the, all the process life cycle of the typhoon and also the uh, induced storm surge could be integrated and also simulated uh, in this case. And now <coughs> we are extending the uh, uh, simulation and also based on the satellite uh, images. <coughs> and we can check in the afterwards of the typhoon hazards. For example, here, that's based on uh, some uh, vegetation index uh, monitoring from the satellite images. Yeah. The other weather uh, related case study, uh, <coughs> that's about the uh, biomass burning here. So uh, <coughs> from the uh, uh, weather conditions and also the situations in different time scale. And we can simulate the uh, <coughs> transportation of the, uh, um, for example, the aerosol CO2 something uh, <coughs> dispersed from Southeast Asia to all the way uh, <coughs> accordingly. The other case here is a, a quite a unique a tsunami case in the uh, Palu Bay, that's a bay. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the uh, uh, tsunami wave has been uh, uh, identified. So the scientists are very, very uh, curious about the uh, causes. And it turns out, based on the uh, observation data we can have right now, the, we understand that it's caused by the uh, earthquake under the sea and also the landslides. So that's why <clears throat> caused the, the uh, uh, tsunami in, the, uh, in this bay. And the uh, numerical simulation is uh, uh, carried out to uh, uh, prove, <coughs> to support the, the, these uh, 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 estimations. So based on such uh, <coughs> uh, case studies, now the uh, uh, web portal for the tsunami wave propagation uh, has uh, just uh, passed the certification of the EOSC and will be uh, available on the EOSC marketplace uh, very soon. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, based on the uh, ComCut uh, <coughs> Cornell multi uh, grid coupled of tsunami model. And <coughs> with the uh, domain scientist support, uh, the users could just input the nine key parameters from the web interface. And you can get the uh, simulation about the uh, <coughs> initial phase, 
the uh, wave height of different uh, 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 stations. The uh, animation of the tsunami from the day zero, and also the uh, uh, maximum uh, wave height of the life cycle of the tsunami case. And <coughs> actually, these services have been online uh, a couple of years. Right now, we have uh, over 100 users <coughs> from over 10 countries, uh, mostly in Asia. And um, over thousands of simulation jobs have been supported uh, by IHC. And here's the uh, URL <coughs> for these services. Uh, <coughs> this is a case about the uh, uh, a flooding in Malaysia, uh, leading by the uh, University of um, uh, Malaysia. And <coughs> so uh, accurate forecast of different uh, time scale is expected after these case, cases in Malaysia to understand, uh, <coughs> uh, to improve the understanding of the uh, uh, weather impact uh, for the uh, extreme rainfall in Malaysia. And uh, <coughs> the scientists also identify some uh, for the questions uh, after these case studies. Earlier this year, there's, there's also a huge uh, tsunami uh, caused by the uh, volcano in Honga Tonga. Uh, <coughs> so uh, in less than three days, the scientists in Taiwan uh, simulate this uh, tsunami wave propagation using the Comcat model. And here's a, a, a case study uh, which has been uh, detail could be found at IGC uh, 2022 about the speech. About the biomass burning, uh, in the uh, past three years, there's a, a one collaboration, uh, international collaboration uh, between Taiwan and several other countries. They uh, <coughs> collect the uh, air quality uh, <coughs> through the flight along the uh, East coast, east, east, uh, coast of uh, uh, China uh, from the Southeast Asia uh, to Japan. <clears throat> they collect the real data to monitor the biomass burning uh, effects in this area. Comparing the uh, bio bi biomass burning effects in the uh, Indochina, uh, Taiwan, South China, and also the uh, uh, East China uh, <coughs> close to Japan the different uh, effects <coughs> has been analyzed. And <coughs> so uh, based on the uh, WRF simulations, uh, such uh, analysis could be uh, uh, achieved and to understand the uh, long range uh, transport of the biomass burning uh, effects in uh, Southeast China. <coughs> this is a case about uh, uh, forest fire monitoring uh, leading by Thailand. Uh, from uh, 2016, they set up some uh, sensors with the support of, of uh, France based on the uh, IoT networks. And also uh, <coughs> uh, from 2019, they have the uh, funding support from uh, Asia Connect, which is also uh, part of the 10 collaborations. And to improve uh, these monitoring networks and uh, the uh, machine learning enabled analysis <coughs> has been integrated. And then <coughs> they set up uh, uh, several uh, sensors in the target area in Thailand. And then <coughs> this project will keep on collecting data and <coughs> try to improve the uh, early warning once there is any fire spot has been identified uh, from those sensors uh, stations. Regarding to the agriculture, uh, we have uh, the first case study, also leading by uh, Tha uh, Thailand, with collaborators from India and Japan, as well as Taiwan, uh, <coughs> to uh, understand how to uh, <coughs> design and improve the uh, climate resilient agriculture. And from, from late uh, 2020, uh, this project also get the uh, funding support from Asia Connect. So uh, in uh, uh, six months, uh, three workshops with almost uh, 200 participants has been uh, uh, involved in the uh, training events uh, with the outcome uh, to uh, evaluate the, the, uh, the weather parameter impact on agricultural protection, the evaluation of the science, technology, and innovation for this uh, <coughs> climate smart agriculture. 
and also uh, some <coughs> uh, <coughs> conclusion on the uh, uh, direction of the future development and also the uh, collaboration in <coughs> uh, different levels about the uh, community, the, uh, the local uh, sites, and also the uh, application and I infrastructure support. Yeah. So <coughs> for the uh, next phase, there will be to targeting on the uh, food security. And uh, from the uh, uh, concern of the local community in Thailand, they, are, <coughs> uh, they like to focus on the uh, water balance analysis. And then <coughs> the other uh, regional infrastructure uh, likes to understand how to support the uh, smart agricultural requirements. Uh, the earthquake application is a different collaboration models because in the in the beginning uh, uh, from uh, 2005 the uh, <coughs> earthquake and seismology uh, community in Taiwan they have been uh, setting up the uh, a strong motion uh, sensor, sensor network in Taiwan and also developed the uh, almost real-time uh, seismic wave propagation uh, uh, systems now <clears throat> there, here is two examples of the production systems. In the left hand side, that's the P alert systems. <clears throat> Over 700 uh, uh, chip sensors has been uh, set up in, in Taiwan in schools. So uh, that's based on the identification of the P wave. That means uh, <clears throat> community or uh, people uh, a bit away from the uh, uh, epicenter could gain uh, from seconds to minutes early warning after there's an earthquake happening uh, <coughs> detected by P wave. So uh, <coughs> that's the uh, uh, pr pr one of the uh, production early warning system in Taiwan. And here is the case of the last uh, weekend happening in the east part of Taiwan. That's the uh, a scale more than uh, six uh, <coughs> happening in consecutive uh, two days. Uh, and from these uh, uh, peer systems, you can uh, <coughs> download the uh, data from any one of the 700 uh, sensor sites. So all the data are open to the world. Yeah. But now it's uh, only uh, limited for Taiwan. But this model could be also extended to other countries. You can set up the chip uh, sensors in <coughs> different Asia countries and we can support build, uh, setting up the uh, data collection and also analysis framework. And then, <clears throat> but there's another requirement is that the uh, velocity model <clears throat> for earthquake has to be in place uh, to uh, achieve such a uh, early warning systems. The other case is the, uh, <clears throat> the real-time moment tensor monitoring systems. Uh, this uh, website, the uh, simulations, <clears throat> from uh, uh, tens of uh, uh, sensor sites, the uh, earthquake waves. So all the uh, results are updated every two minutes. So you can get <clears throat> all the uh, uh, earthquake activities from the websites. And here's the case of the uh, uh, a strong earthquake event in Sichuan uh, in, uh, in, in September. So all the data of the two systems are open. So that's another uh, new type of collaborations. So the regional infrastructure, we did not involve in the development of those systems. But afterwards, right now, we can uh, support the uh, open data access to this uh, shared earthquake data uh, together with the, uh, this community in Taiwan. And this is, this is another interesting uh, <coughs> online systems so uh, <clears throat> once there is any earthquake, uh, the uh, parameters of the earthquake has been uh, officially released by the government, then this uh, shake map and also shake movie could be generated in less than five minutes. Yeah. So you can see the uh, animations of the shake map. Yeah. <clears throat> There's also a new uh, collaboration. Uh, that's uh, uh, together with the uh, Sentinel Asia, uh, <clears throat> which is very similar to the uh, role of the International Charter or the Copernicus Project 
uh, in Europe. Uh, what we like to do in this collaboration is that to uh, build up the uh, <coughs> fair uh, FAIR compatible open access satellite uh, images so that uh, users in Asia could easier access to the uh, analysis ready data. Senti responsibility of the Sentinel Asia is to support the um, <coughs> fast uh, access to the uh, satellite data once there is a any uh, incident <coughs> or requirements from the Asia partners. So in this new uh, collaboration, we are making use of the uh, Open Data Cube systems and to build up the uh, access interface uh, based on the uh, STAC uh, protocol, <coughs> Spatial Temporal Asset uh, Catalog. So uh, <coughs> the, uh, as I learned from a C-scale project yesterday, actually the uh, requirements and also ideas are quite similar. But <coughs> what's different is that we have to also take care of the uh, infrastructure uh, built up by the uh, Open Data Cube. Yeah. But anyway, the collaboration with C-scale might be uh, very helpful. And in these slides, <coughs> that's also the, uh, uh, one of the examples based on the uh, Super Typhoon Haiyan case. So <coughs> you can identify the uh, available satellite images based on the uh, footage of the uh, images. And <coughs> with specific time scale of the uh, satellite data, you can get the uh, vegetation index or other uh, analysis results from the uh, <coughs> to understand the uh, afterwards development of the, uh, uh, after the super typhoon. Yeah. And <coughs> this is a, a simple e infrastructure uh, architectures uh, based on the distributed cloud systems uh, we uh, proposed uh, to be implemented in the next few years in Asia. So together with the uh, Sentinel Asia and also the DMCC, <coughs> uh, many uh, key components in the workflow of the disaster management, from the preparedness to respond to recovery, uh, recovery and also mitigation might be uh, implemented uh, 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 in these uh, collaborations. So uh, DMCC is uh, a kind <coughs> focusing on the preparedness for the analysis of the risk and also uh, some kind of prediction uh, based on the uh, uh, simulation. And also uh, from the analysis of the satellite images, you can also uh, <coughs> understanding the uh, development afterwards. For the Sentinel Asia, that's focusing on the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, fast uh, provisioning of the uh, analysis ready data from the satellite resources. Yeah. So that's the uh, one of the collaboration in the next few years. And we also have uh, many uh, supporting uh, hands from Asia, for example, from Philippines. They have been uh, <coughs> developing several uh, analysis capability over the satellite resources. For example, the volcano uh, eruption monitoring <coughs> detection of the uh, land use uh, changes and mapping change detection and also the prediction of the uh, 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 crops, etc. So based on uh, those requirements I mentioned, it's very natural that the research, research data management is uh, necessary in this uh, uh, collaboration and also has to be integrated in the uh, uh, e-infrastructure. <coughs> in the beginning, <coughs> we like to integrate the uh, uh, Zenodo services. And then <coughs> from this year, we are uh, working together with the uh, Depo Deposita uh, development team in Academia Sinica, uh, which is uh, <coughs> developed by the uh, Institute of Information Science in Taiwan. <coughs> the de depo Deposita is supporting the uh, uh, research data management and also collaborative uh, research based on CCAN, supporting the uh, data deposited, uh, discover, and reuse. Yeah. <coughs> so once the data is uh, ready for release, the uh, the ARKID uh, is also uh, provisioned so that the uh, data citation uh, 
could be also uh, per, uh, supported, and it's, which is, could be uh, much easier for the uh, sharing of the data. It, of course, it's also uh, uh, FAIR compatible uh, from this. So <coughs> in, in Asia, in this collaboration on, on disaster mitigation, the APEN, ASEAN, and the IGC are the primary uh, <coughs> collaboration framework. Of course, we started from those uh, support from WSG and EGI. And then with the uh, specific requirements from the risk community, we are improving the uh, services of the infrastructure and also the application services. And then we are making those services to be uh, more generic, to be able to uh, uh, use for uh, broader user communities. Uh, in the past few years, we've been uh, <coughs> uh, build up the uh, <coughs> routine activities such as a uh, joint workshop on disaster mitigation in almost every IGC from 2018. We have uh, uh, several working group meetings uh, in APEN so that the, uh, all the partners in Asia could meet uh, at least uh, three times uh, every year <coughs> in every APEN meeting uh, twice a year and also in IGC. And there are also uh, project-based activities as well. Yeah. So the <coughs> next events, that's the, uh, we are going to have the uh, next APEN meeting in February 2023 uh, in, in Nepal and the uh, ICC uh, 2023 in Taiwan in the week of uh, March 19. So these two events are, has been uh, <coughs> confirmed to be in-person meeting So ap after so many years. So the, uh, we, we, we welcome the uh, uh, EGI to organize some uh, workshop or any activities in IGC to, to support the uh, collaborations. And also, uh, all of you are also welcome to, uh, <coughs> to come to Taiwan to join this uh, uh, IGC, uh, which is going to be a 20th anniversary of this uh, event supporting the e-science and also regional collaboration in the past uh, 20 years. Of course, the CST crowd uh, <clears throat> and also uh, the team of Professor Lee, as well as the uh, IHAP, are also welcomed uh, to this event next year in Taiwan. Of course, we are moving uh, towards open science. Uh, uh, it's really important to have the support from EOSC and also EGI, as I mentioned for the uh, release and the open access to those uh, materials, outcomes from the case study I mentioned. <coughs> of course, there are some uh, challenges. Uh, <coughs> the uh, case study services development and also the collaboration framework needs the involvement uh, deeply by the uh, domain scientists, by the user community, by the uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, parties of the infrastructure and applications. And uh, <coughs> extending the case study based on deeper understanding approach is also not easy. And uh, we hope <coughs> that the uh, collaboration with different institutes to, to get the observation data could be more easier uh, based on those outcomes from those uh, case studies. And uh, every hazard event has to contribute to the physical mechanism behind uh, the uh, correct uh, characteristics of the Earth systems. So that's a, that's a one of the primary uh, mission of the collaboration to uh, advance the science, to advance the knowledge to the uh, Earth system. And also we <coughs> need the infrastructure and, and uh, the services to support all these objectives. So in the future, as I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> the leading uh, scientist group has been identified according to the uh, type of hazard as listed here. And we are ex extending to the uh, collaboration with the uh, 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 space agency in many Asia country and to make use of those uh, analysis ready data to improve the, the knowledge <coughs> to the hazard as well. And uh, <coughs> we have the uh, uh, the uh, 
collaboration with uh, several countries from uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand uh, could join this regional infrastructure uh, with, uh, uh, <coughs> with uh, uh, hardware resources and also the uh, cloud services. So, uh, <coughs> of course, we are uh, learning from EGI EOS to move in towards the uh, open science uh, services to this collaboration. Yeah. So, capacity building <coughs> is uh, a very important in Asia. So that we hope uh, more users could take advantage of those uh, <coughs> we have been uh, done uh, from collaborations and to collect more new requirements uh, from them. So the regional collaboration will be uh, keep on going and hope to could be extended to uh, more uh, user community and also the type of hazards. And <coughs> the uh, deeper understanding approach has been approved uh, to be uh, uh, <coughs> to be effective uh, for uh, according to the goals of these collaborations. And <coughs> in the uh, in the future, we hope that. Um, uh, more complicated uh, use cases could be uh, uh, <coughs> included. And also with the uh, combination of the uh, uh, scientific uh, simulation and also the data-centric analysis together. And <coughs> APN and IGC <coughs> are the uh, primary collaboration platform and also uh, has been uh, supporting the original collaboration in the, in the uh, uh, past decades. And collaboration with the uh, and support from EGI is very important, and we hope all the uh, uh, results and case study and the shared resources could be also contribute to the uh, EGI in the future. And the collaboration is of course is always open, so everyone is uh, welcome to join us. So I have to, uh, in the last, I have to uh, thanks to the uh, great support from EGI from Asia Connect, from uh, some uh, <coughs> uh, agencies in, in different countries in Asia. Of course, all, also to the uh, scientific group and also the uh, partners as listed here. So that's my uh, report today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, for the impressive overview of all the collaborations that you have in the Asia Pacific. Um, so uh, I would invite both of you to, to sit here because I, I, I mean, we have time for a few questions. So um, I would start with one um, that is in part, I mean, partly Eric, you already covered that, but um, I would like to hear from both of you uh, if you see any, any specific trends happening in international collaboration. So from, from your experience, uh, is, has anything changed from when you started collaborating with other infrastructures or other partners in other, part, in other countries? And what is happening now? So I'm not sure if those are working, but otherwise, here's one. Yeah. In our experience, there are several uh, key components, for example, the uh, domain scientist, the uh, user community, and also the application and the infrastructure provider. Yeah. The other thing is that we have to implement everything we need uh, <coughs> based on the uh, regional infrastructure. So uh, we've been uh, benefiting from EGI and also from the, uh, WCG in the past two, two decades. That's very important. That's also the, uh, uh, for the moment, that's the uh, primary uh, technical uh, supporter uh, to the uh, Asia regional collaborations in our case. So there is no problem uh, working together with other infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, I would like to complement what uh, uh, Eric said. That yes, definitely. Um, as I also mentioned during my uh, speech, there is this uh, paradigm shift. So now we need to change a little bit the way we work uh, because we have uh, a massive amount of data that uh, researchers to. Uh, to analyze and this requires uh, not only uh, more modern infrastructure but also additional services to, to deal with this kind of uh, challenges. So uh, thanks to the collaboration we have uh, worldwide because uh, uh, this is also another good uh, uh, achievement. Uh, we are able to 
try to address this kind of a new request. And, uh, but of course, uh, this is just the beginning of the story, so we need to continue and evolve uh, in order to meet. And also, as uh, Tiziana said, uh, the community uh, are important for us because they are the ones that are driving our evolution of the services uh, because we need to, in the end, provide solutions for them. So, and uh, they are part of the game. Thanks both. And um, the other question I have is that if you see any, so apart for the uh, risk assessment and management, for example, do you see any other areas for um, collaboration uh, with, the, with the international partners? And uh, to Giuseppe, where do you think that EGI is going to focus uh, next? In fact, almost every field they have their uh, user community internationally. For example, the uh, weather simulation, the earthquake, yes. And so we like to get connected uh, from the case study. Yeah, we hope to, based on that, we can have a chance to communicate with the uh, broader community and to see what are the requirements. What we like, what we benefit from such collaboration is that the uh, services technology and also the infrastructure would be improved based on those uh, implementation of the user's needs. Yeah. That's the key value from the uh, uh, infrastructure provider point of view. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank and congratulate with Eric for this important achievement because this week we have now the Simon portal in EOSC, so thanks for this, because it was a good uh, success. So, of course, we are interested to continue this collaboration that already started. So, uh, Eric mentioned this uh, capacity building and the possibility to scale up capacity and offer solution for uh, the community, uh, the MCC community. Of course, we are uh, uh, willing to, to continue to, to work together. Uh, we already started discussing before, but of course, this is uh, something that we will uh, continue in a dedicated meeting. So. And, uh, of course, we are also opening to support other use cases in the region, if uh, this is the case, but, uh, uh, yeah, this is something that we can also plan uh, over the year, over the next uh, couple of years. Thanks. Um, are there questions from the party? Okay, Tiziana, and then Matthew, okay. I have a question for Eric and one for Giuseppe. The first... Um, question is about um, echoing your point on uh, scientific collaborations, environmental science, risk mitigation, climate are also very important uh, in Europe. We've also dedicated initiatives like Destination Earth, uh, which is tackling exactly the problem scope that you presented. However, there are also priorities in other domains with strong uh, societal impact, uh, such as uh, cancer treatment, so health is also quite relevant. And I was wondering if, besides this rich portfolio of applications, um, there is also an interest in engaging internationally around the cancer imaging. This is a project where the GI partnership has a participation with other scientific communities. So do you see also an opportunity to broaden this? Is this something ASIA um, is also embracing or considering? That's also what we like to see <coughs> and what like to uh, support. The key point is that uh, for the life science, there are sensitive data. There are some um, uh, 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 red codes in different countries. Uh, for example, in Taiwan, even AGC is not easy to get support to the hospital or to the uh, human genome pro related project, for example, yeah, because there are specific requirements from those users, yes. But technically, that's all, of course, that's uh, possible. So in the other way, we, are <clears throat> we, we aim to uh, collaborate with those leading institute in Academia Sinica uh, <clears throat> in the start at this point, yeah. And then through them, uh, they have their connection with the, the hospital, with the uh, life science, uh, scientist in Taiwan, and then we can start it to support some applications. So as a, uh, a starting point, that's our approach right now. 
Yes, yeah, sensitive data, I think, was mentioned uh, yesterday in the opening plenary as one of the areas for future technical development for the DJI Federation. The idea, because we see use cases which indeed require uh, special mechanisms for this uh, data treatment, is to have solutions which can be deployed across institute, across border internationally, and which are not too specific to given communities, so that we can have a solution to treat to, to handle that uh, internationally. So this is perhaps still an area where technical development and joint endeavors would be necessary, but uh, very beneficial to prepare our infrastructures for the coming 10 years. So perhaps this is a message that we should further expand um, at the event in Taiwan and in the coming months. And then I have a question for Giuseppe about the training. I think uh, Tian Hui from um, CNIC mentioned how important um, uh, cooperation and um, yeah, joining expertise and efforts in training. How do you see this happening? Because this is a huge challenge, um, not, a, not only because of the time zones, but also language, etc. So is this feasible? How can as EGI address that? Uh, yeah, this is, thank you for this, Anna. Yeah, this is definitely a challenges question. Uh, yeah, this is something that probably we need to consider, uh, have this uh, training program for targeting uh, um, use the user needs of different regions, and this is uh, a possibility. Uh, in the past, uh, we didn't have a lot of experience to organize uh, this kind of event. We didn't have a lot of uh, effort, let's say, for uh, for training. Uh, but uh, yeah, probably uh, we need to um, consider the possibility to uh, in improve our. Uh, um, Offering, let's say, and uh, organize a, a similar event for uh, for uh, these uh, partners. So uh, it's difficult at the moment, uh, but uh, yeah, we need to um, consider possibility to address also this kind of request in the future. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Eric, for the very interesting presentation. Um, my question is uh, following on from the um, case studies, the completed case studies you uh, covered, um, the link between those case studies, their outputs, and the tangible benefits to the general population, uh, what those benefits are likely to be, and when they're likely to come into being. Uh, I think you mentioned this uh, uh, tsunami early detection work. Um, are the outputs of these models already feeding into that? Yeah. <coughs> the uh, disaster mitigation is, uh, is uh, a public concern, but we also have to be uh, very careful because <laughs> we limited our uh, collaboration to be uh, in academic and also uh, <coughs> for the uh, uh, training and edu educational purposes. Uh, from uh, many governments in Asia, we are not allowed to release the uh, uh, predictions or any uh, forecast of the uh, event. Yeah, we are not. <laughs> we don't. We don't have such uh, 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 functions uh, by law. Yeah, but <clears throat> currently, most of the users are the uh, scientists, students <clears throat> from different countries. Uh, some might. We also have users from industry. Yeah. So I guess um, my main, my real question is, at what point in the future do you think that we can say that our infrastructures are contributing to saving lives? Do you have any feelings about this? Yes, that, that's also the vision uh, of us. But we need some help. For example, we can work together with the, uh, the uh, uh, Central Weather Bureau in Taiwan the official institute and also the uh, uh, disaster related government agencies because we can provide some of the uh, risk analysis beforehand once the, the uh, incident happens. Yeah. We try to build up such connections. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Eden Mahmoud. I'm representing the Black Sea Universities Network. It's a network of 120 universities from the Black Sea region. And we are building a nice collaboration with the EGI 
thanks to Matthew and these very nice people here. <laughs> so uh, uh, at present, the models that we are working on is EGI with the local community. Uh, I was wondering if there is any kind of model for local communities to collaborate with this kind this kind of uh, regional approaches, so using EGI as a channel. Yeah, okay. of course, of course it's possible, yes. We can uh, collect this kind of uh, uh, expression of interest, let's say, uh, from um, uh, your community and put in contact with uh, other uh, example of uh, scientists working in the same area and uh, uh, give you the possibility to work together. We are a lot of uh, um, partnership programs in place, so sometimes we can also uh, not only rely on our infrastructure, but also on our external infrastructure, so it's possible. So I would like to thank you all very much for uh, these very enlightening talks. Um, I've been reminded that we have a um, group picture taking place outside in a minute, so I would like to thank you very much for, for this again. So an applause, please. <laughs> And yeah, so let's look forward for future collaborations. And just a second, because I have something for you.
we're already a bit late. Um, this is uh, uh, the session on uh, pathways for improved coordination and cooperation uh, amongst uh, e-infrastructures, which is, by the way, a topic which is close to my own heart and past. Um, uh, but I try to be neutral, uh, neutral this time. So um, I'm happy to have uh, that we have a, a, a nice uh, introduction on the topic by someone from ERG, Fotis, and that we will have a panel later representing both the user communities and uh, the e infrastructures. So, um, and the duration of the session, it says to uh, a quarter past, a quarter to uh, four, but we will end a bit earlier to allow uh, for at least one panelist to uh, uh, catch her plane on time. So uh, we aim for 3.30 max, 3.25. That said, um, I think we, without further ado, um, should give the word to Fotis, Fotis Karyanis uh, from the ERG Sport uh, Program, but a long time um, uh, experienced uh, person in ERG uh, matters to, uh, to introduce us in this topic. Thank you very much, Arjen, uh, and thanks also to Tiziana, who transformed my uh, uh, application for a short talk into this uh, closing plenary topic. Um, so, uh, a few words about myself. Uh, I have been working in infrastructures for more than 20 years. Uh, I started with GRNet and thanks to Vasilis Maglaris who persuaded me uh, to, to join uh, GRNet and then I had a long uh, trip in, in several institutions and also several uh, projects and you see there you know, all the major projects. Uh, and I'm currently working uh, for uh, Innovax, which is a, an SME in Cyprus, and also at the Athena Research Center for the ERG support project and also uh, the support to, the, to S3, stress free. A few words about ERG. I will, I will go a bit fast because uh, probably you know this already. So, ERG is a self regulated uh, policy advisory body, uh, it operates on consensus based decision making. Uh, and advises uh, national authorities and the Commission on, on the, in the area of infrastructures covering the whole span. Uh, the mission uh, and vision, uh, it's about integration of, in the area of infrastructures and connected services, and the mission is uh, to support coherent, innovative, uh, uh, strategic European infrastructure policy, policy making for sustainable infrastructure services. Uh, so the Infrastructure Commons was one of the major publications of ERG in the past, in the, uh, more than 10 years ago. And uh, I believe it's, it's, uh, it has been the foundation of the European Open Science Cloud. It's the, uh, the integrated ecosystem of resources and services uh, you know, that is open, user-friendly and accessible to the researchers and scientists to perform uh, their science. So, uh, the European Open Science Cloud can be considered as an instantiation of the uh, ERG Commons, uh, together with some elements of open science. Uh, and already in the uh, white paper of 2013, uh, the idea of the marketplace was introduced. I also drafted a document uh, called the Marketplace for Infrastructure Services at the end of 2014. Uh, expanding the idea of the commons and uh, you know uh, co contributing to the definition of, of EOSC with some uh, concepts that you're quite familiar probably within EOSC you know the point of access the catalog of services the search facility uh, both research and commercial services compliance AI you know multiple views and so on and this is uh, you know an updated figure uh, you see the old figure uh, here uh, and the commons, of course, you, you know, the, the, the bottom layer. And you see here an updated uh, figure with all the layers, which is a bit more complicated, but uh, essentially it's the same thing. Uh, the bottom layers, connectivity, middleware, computing, both HTC and HPC, uh, data infrastructures, and of course, you know, the virtual environments, the thematic, uh, the vertical thematic uh, clusters, integrated core services, and so on. So I think I saw this because it's important to delineate EOSC. We have been uh, missing something like this, and uh, you know everybody uh, is thinking of probably of something different. Uh, I personally believe this is my personal view. 
It was also discussed in the last ERG delegates meeting, but uh, you know, uh, of course, there are different views. Uh, and I believe EOSC is, you know, this part, this upper part, covering also part of the computing layer, the HTC. So anyway, I uh, I give it here for uh, you know for for discussion. Moving to the political uh, background of the cooperation and coordination, uh, there have been the competitive, the competitive council conclusions at the, at the highest level, at the ministerial level, in 2018 on EOSC. Uh, and the member states were encouraged uh, to invite their communities, infrastructures, and so on, to get organized and to, you know, uh, get some coordination at the national level initially, and called on the commission to make use of uh, uh, initiatives such as SPRG and others. Uh, uh, more recently, uh, there was the, the, the Competitiveness Council, Council conclusions on the new uh, era, the European Research Area, and then again the Commission and the Member States were encouraged to increase the level of both national and European coordination, in particular in the areas of research infrastructures and infrastructures. There was also this uh, pact for research and innovation one year later, and then again the connection uh, to, uh, of existing and new European and national research infrastructures, including infrastructures, in, is mentioned. And finally, uh, the, the era of future governance and policy agenda. There is this uh, era policy action eight on the research infrastructures, which uh, talks about increased cooperation between research infrastructures, e infrastructures, and stakeholders, including. Uh, through EOSC. So, ERG advice on coordination and cooperation going a bit back in the past again. Uh, so, uh, in, in 2016, there was the ERG roadmap, and uh, you know, Arian was also instrumental in this, uh, uh, in this area, let's say, of, of coordination at the national level. So, th this need of coordination at national level uh, was stressed and the, uh, you know, the importance of strong national building blocks, uh, enabling coherent and efficient participation in the European efforts. Then, in, in 2019, there was a national notes document uh, which uh, you know, took further this recommendation and uh, a bit, did a bit of landscaping. Uh, this was presented um, uh, a few years ago and then uh, uh, this was taken further with the ERG white paper 2021, which was presented last year here in the, it was online in the EGI conference. Uh, and currently we are working on this uh, uh, white paper 2022, which is the, which is focusing at the European level, coordination and collaboration at the European level. And this is expected to be uh, finalized by the end of the, of the year. So a few words about the national notes document. As I said, landscaping activity of 28 countries coordinated by the, by the national ERG delegates through a questionnaire on coordination, governance, funding, access, and so on. Uh, you can get the details, but the main point was diversity among the countries, but still there have been patterns and approaches identified. Uh, the white paper 2021, uh, which was presented last year, it's about coordination at uh, institutional, national, and regional level levels. So uh, this continued the work of the uh, national knowledge document. And you know the main message was that coordination is continuously needed at national level among all players, both the horizontal players of the country, but also among generic and thematic with the research infrastructures and so on. And coordination should be also expanded within and across countries. And at the institutional level, we got an example from Chalmers University that they have the e-commons. Uh, this is in Sweden, but we need more of these. And then at the regional level, we had the Iber grid and, uh, uh, and also the Nordics. And uh, at EU level, of course, uh, there, is, there, is, there are already multiple fora, but this is the main uh, topic of this uh, white paper, the new white paper. So, co so this is focusing at coordination at EU level. Uh, and you see there, uh, there, have, there, is, uh, there are some infrastructures in production for decades, uh, considerable developments in computing and data infrastructures in the last 5 to, to 10, 15 years. Uh, and of course, the two new initiatives the European Open Science Cloud and EuroHPC uh, well underway, but still there needs to be a lot of coordination, not only among these two, but also among all the players in the area of infrastructures. 
So the, the topic is about bridging the, identify and, uh, the uh, identified uh, cooperation and coordination gaps, reflecting on all the issues, uh, providing concrete advice and recommendation to all stakeholders, and contributing towards increased cooperation. And hopefully this will be also beneficial in the long run for the end users and the researchers, you, uh, focusing on the research and not on the tools. So going back, uh, Again, some to, to, to go through some of the past ERG recommendations on uh, the topic of, the, of cooperation and coordination. I will read this, this is nice. This was written in 2013, and it said, in the, two 20, in the 2020 vision, providers have the free freedom to innovate and users enjoy the freedom to choose the services they need from a mix of public and commercial services. In order to enable this vision, we need an ecosystem of different organizations at the national and international levels, uh, each with their own focus, but also with effective coordination between them. So ERG then, uh, so the white paper uh, also talks about separation between three core functions, community building, high level strategy and coordination. So this is the topic here. Service provision and innovation, and I believe also the commission is following somehow this, uh, these areas in, in, in its calls. Um, and of course, on the first topic, there, is, there was the, the proposal for a forum, an infrastructure forum for, coordina for coordination between uh, the major infrastructure players and, uh, and types. So, and then it continues. Here, this is a clear need for a single infrastructure umbrella forum for community building high level strategy and, and as you said, coordination. This is not a separate organization, rather you know, a forum for discussion and uh, alignment and harmonization and so on. And uh, uh, just a few wo more words about the Roadmap 2000, uh, 2016, which again talks about an emphatic cooperation among all stakeholders, uh, the providers, the users and the funders. It's a kind of a tripartite collaboration here as well uh, as the EOS partnership. And uh, there was also discussions about a joint infrastructure, ERIC, integrated, but this was then far away, it's still far away. And that's the only way to coordinate is uh, this such a lightweight uh, coordination forum. So moving uh, back to the future or, or, or the present uh, uh, the about white paper 2022 and the coordination at the EU level. So the process that the ERG has followed is that there was first a, a dedicated meeting with, with the Commission in December 2021. Uh, then uh, ERG established a f an informal link with the EOS steering board. There have been two sessions at the ERG workshop under French EU presidency uh, one co-organized with the EOSC on the role of infrastructures, and the, the, uh, the third one uh, you see uh, at the bottom, uh, it's, about, it's about this topic exactly of the white paper on cross-infrastructure collaboration and coordination. Uh, a questionnaire was then prepared, and this was, I think, uh, well, well adopted this session, and then uh, we followed up uh, preparing a questionnaire. We got uh, comments from several delegations, around 15 delegations from ERG, and uh, we integrated their comments and sent the questionnaire to the infrastructure stakeholders, and uh, you will see several of these uh, in the panel. And we got a first set of answers uh, last and also this week. Uh, you see uh, the ones who answered already, I'm sure, uh, there will be more. I understand that EGI will be uh, preparing this. Uh, they were very busy with the, with the conference. So going back to some of these uh, bullets, uh, there was a dedica dedicated meeting with the commission. There was, we had uh, Michelle Shoup and Lina Munari uh, from both RTD and Connect uh, in December. And this is the slide from Michelle Soup saying that the increased cooperation between research infrastructures, infrastructures and stakeholders in the era uh, shall take advantage of the EOS tripartite uh, uh, governance. Uh, and that an impactful ERG should develop proper interfaces with the steering board. This was done and its members in the EOSC association. This is ongoing. Uh, and such interfaces could hopefully help uh, convergence within and across the EU and they are looking forward to the ERG recommendations. This was a panel uh, in the May ERG May workshop. Uh, we had two panels, one all women and one all men, but uh, at the end I think it, it balances out. 
So uh, we invited, you know, uh, all major players uh, in, in in the area of infrastructures and uh, some more. Also, you know, this Sergei Mozina is from Slovenia. He's the co-chair of the ERA Forum, representing the member states. And in fact, he said that uh, there is a need. So this is a very high political uh, body under Iraq, and uh, I think uh, he, he was very supportive uh, on this area. He said he stressed the need for cooperation and coordination among S3, EOSC, and ERG. And you see at the bottom uh, what he's saying, cross-infrastructure governance, collaboration and coordination of infrastructure components, uh, integrated, providing integrated user-friendly services towards researchers. This is the end result, of course which requires uh, policy making, identification of gaps and user needs, coordination of all actors in filling these gaps, and mutual learning and exchange of best practices. So a brief analysis of the, of the answers uh, in the questionnaire that uh, uh, we received. The first point, the first answer was who is, uh, who is filling it in. So the second one uh, it was about this lightweight governance of infrastructures, uh, setting the strategy and uh, you know, uh, performing coordination and the idea uh, of this uh, umbrella forum, uh, which is not uh, an, an entity, just a forum for discussion and, and you know, strategy setting. And the majority of answers received uh, is positive, covering you know, all infrastructures, including, of course, the open scholarly communications, uh, but, of course, discussion is needed about the exact roles and uh, coordination also with the, with the existing bodies. <coughs> the EOS steering board answer uh, stated that uh, we should be using existing channels such as EOSC Association, the ESFRI Stakeholder Forum, uh, or the upcoming ESFRI EOSC uh, group. We don't know what this will be, possibly a task force and also get advice from ERAC. There was a meeting of ERAC uh, last week and we are waiting for, for some of the official announcements and the minutes. Uh, some form of representation of the users is also favored, uh, possibly in a domain agnostic, uh, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, interface. Uh, it's not possible to, to invite, of course, all the domains, so this is a tricky point and possibly having an advisory role, but this is, uh, of course, for discussion. On the question whether, and, and, uh, besides the, let's say, the, the more uh, political and strategy setting uh, umbrella forum, also a technical forum is needed, the, we, we got uh, mixed answers. Uh, some were positive and some negative, so no clear conclusions there. The other area was compatible policies, interoperable services, operational aspects, and uh, it was uh, more about uh, EOSC and UHPC federating their services and their policies. And again, we received their um, mixed answers. Of course, this should happen, but uh, the timing is not uh, clear. Maybe some said uh, that first these two bodies should be um, working uh, on each of their own areas and then attempting to work together. Uh, so, and also I think this is in line with the EOSC uh, uh, multi-annual uh, roadmap and the, you know, the phased approach. Regarding AAI and uh, the, you know, the paradigm, whether this is a good example of, uh, you know, compatible policies in the area, most of the answers were rather positive. Uh, although, you know, there are multiple providers. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, multiple providers um, and, uh, you know, slow progress. And still quite some work to make it more user-friendly and, tra and transparent, especially when using services across providers. Uh, on a question about resource access models in HPC and HTC, uh, there was an answer from Prey saying that there is uh, some kind of lightweight peer review uh, process, for example, for the uh, uh, AI uh, resources, and this somehow bridges the gap between, you know, the full, the full-blown uh, peer review process and the, the more, uh, let's say, uh, straightforward process for accessing HTC resources. Regarding the contribution of this infrastructure forum uh, in the EU Charter of Artists uh, Access, this is the responsibility of the DG uh, RTD 
uh, under uh, this policy uh, agenda action point eight. Uh, everybody was very positive, so in a way, somehow coordinating first in this infrastructure forum and then uh, providing answers uh, to contributing to the Charter of Access. Regarding coordination with industry, uh, mixed answers, some positive, some negative, saying that this is not a priority for now. And some other points, there was a, a, a point about a cross-infrastructure help desk and training capacity needed you know, across all the, uh, the infrastructures. In, in the area of cost and business models, funding and sustainability, uh, there was a question about cost models and methodologies, mixed answered. Some of them uh, have already uh, cost models and methodologies. Some are, uh, they have ongoing efforts, but more work is required. Uh, collecting and sharing different approaches in this area around methodologies and cost models. This is very important also to track costs and uh, you know, now with the, with the uh, energy crisis and the very high costs, uh, everybody was very positive that uh, you know, we need to collect uh, practices and uh, and approaches and share them. Uh, regarding business models and, su and sustained funding for the infrastructures, th most say that they are working in this direction. Uh, so the last point, other, which was other, other points, what are the main barriers, obstacles for cross-infrastructure uh, activities? Uh, there were different answers, different legal and funding environments, dependencies on projects with limited uh, duration. Administrative barriers uh, rooted in the funding of resources that govern the users, especially for cross-infrastructure uh, uh, cost allocation. Uh, fragmented environment, many infrastructures, many player services, different types of actors from networking to computing and uh, scholarly communication, different priorities and policies. Uh, uh, different or lack of common coordinated business models. Uh, regarding other points, there was this uh, point on talent shortage. Um, so keeping high talented personnel with the lower sal salaries compared to industry was, was mentioned. And of course, ease of use and use friendly, user friendly services was also uh, identified. Uh, so this is the summary, the short summary. Uh, just note that uh, I only had a couple of days to do this analysis, so more proper analysis will, will be done. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get some feedback today from the panel and via uh, questions and the audience, of course. Uh, there is also some discussion tomorrow at the ERG delegates meeting, uh, which is an online one. Uh, the analysis will be presented uh, uh, at the, by the end of uh, the year at the white paper. Uh, the analysis will be prepared by the support project of ERG. Of course, it will be approved by ERG, include some recommendations but we also plan to include contributions from the infrastructures themselves, possibly as annexes. This, is, this needs to be discussed within infra, uh, with the infrastructures, whether they want to share the already provided uh, que uh, answers to the questions or they want to provide a summary uh, position statement for the white paper. And there will be also the next ERG workshop here in Prague uh, in December, and there will be one session uh, on the white paper somehow acting as a final consultation uh, before publication. Uh, 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 one word about the, the first ESFRI stakeholder forum that took place last week in Brussels. Uh, so the main topic again was cooperation among ESFRI and its stakeholders, in particular research infrastructures. And the ESFRI chair said, you know, uh, you, you need to, to go beyond your comfort zones uh, to cooperate with, uh, with all stakeholders and pre perform cross-disciplinary research. Uh, there, are, there were some people saying, oh, we are already doing this, uh, some others not, but uh, so it's interesting to note. So maybe something similar is needed also from the infrastructures, so getting out of their comfort zones. So and I think I will conclude with, uh, with this slide. Uh, uh, of course, cooperation and coordination is required, has been required, is required, and will be required uh, at and across all levels through the federation chain, institutional, national, uh, regional, in some cases, European. Uh, first answers uh, to questions indicate that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, they, that, that they are willing to discuss the idea uh, of this umbrella forum uh, for coordination and strategy setting. 
uh, and this ultimately will benefit also the end users. So the question is maybe also for the panel whether uh, they would like to, the infrastructures would like to go beyond their vested in interest and uh, comfort zones to, to collaborate and, uh, you know, uh, discuss the, the issues for the benefit of the users. And the one more provocative question, is federation enough or shall we start talking about some more integration by uh, the year 2030? And uh, I conclude with, uh, with this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Fotis. Um, in view of uh, the timing of the s whole session, I suggest that we do not have an opportunity to ask you questions <laughs> because I hope the panelists will provide some um, response to your, to your talk. Um, again, I must disclose that I am still a member of EIRG, have been that since 2012, and uh, a person once said EIRG is a body, a policy advisory body that tells others what to do. Um, that's something different than being a chair of EGI that then actually has to listen and implement that. So I'm a bit of a J J Jekyll and Hyde uh, person here. Anyway, I would like to start with, uh, you can sit uh, down, uh, Fotis, you, yeah. um, with the first uh, with the panel, but I suggest we do that by having the first presentation from the perspective of the user communities, that is Chiara, Chiara Ferrari from uh, SCA. Um, and uh, you have prepared uh, some slides, and after that, take one of the chairs uh, behind so that you don't have to switch uh, uh, chairs anymore. Go ahead. This microphone? Yeah. yeah. And how can I move? It's the uh, green arrow, right? So I'm the person who is uh, asking to leave uh, earlier, <laughs> I'm, it's my fault, so I will try to be as fast as possible. Um, I'm an astronomer at Observatoire de la Côte d'Azur in the south of France, director of uh, SK France, uh, so leading the participation of France to this uh, fantastic project, and also chair of uh, the European SKA Forum. So that's why today I'm here to talk about uh, the SKO. Unfortunately, this is my last slide. Uh, how can I go back uh, with the red arrow? Okay. So uh, I would like to start with uh, uh, giving you a little, a few words about SKO. Probably you have already heard about, since it's a big player in the field of, uh, it will be a big player in the field of HPC and data. Uh, it's a new intergovernmental organization uh, started in 2021 after a long preparatory work by the SKA organization um, that was a, um, a UK private company with uh, countries participating all over the world. You see them in a... Uh, uh, blue in the in the map, and uh, so the this uh, SKAO observatory uh, is the second intergovernmental organization for ground-based astronomy in the world after ISO. Uh, it's in charge of uh, constructing and operating two uh, radio telescopes, uh, one in South Africa and one in Australia. In South Africa, it will be made up by uh, big dishes. In uh, Australia, by many uh, smaller antennas. Um, the construction started, so the SKAO is now, because sometimes I still hear people saying, ah, yes, it's interesting, but it will be in the future. No, not at all. The construction started on the July 1st, 2021. It was an historical moment. And uh, we look forward to use it. I'm an astronomer, so I really look forward to use it because it will, it will be really an observatory uh, uh, covering a wealth of open questions in astronomy, uh, cosmology, and fundamental physics. And the very important point here is that uh, uh, the kind of data and the kind of data products that we will produce with the SKA uh, will be extremely wide. And that means that there is a huge variety of, uh, of uh, workflows that we will need to, to, to operate. That means that we will need uh, really a lot of expertise in uh, different domains uh, uh, that you cover here, HDA, HPC, uh, AI. 
So how, uh, why we often hear about the SKA, not only for uh, astronomy, but also for uh, in terms of data. Uh, here you see the SKAO data journey. Um, I hope that you can read the, the, the numbers, the, the, the quantities of data that are produced by the observations of SKA are huge. Uh, they are of the order of a few uh, petabits per second. Um, and there are three different main phases of uh, um, dealing with the SKO data. There is a very first stage close to the antennas, where there is a, a first pre-reduction of the data. Uh, in terms also of size, uh, RFI, so interferences, removals, and uh, then this data uh, go to a second step, uh, that is the centralized infrastructure named SPC, uh, Science Processing Center. What I would like to mention here is that with current radio telescopes, uh, astronomers uh, receive data coming out from what I've shown in red, uh, the, the red uh, rectangles. So at the moment, uh, astronomers collect those data coming after a first data reduction from the antenna, and then it's their job to do the data processing and so on. This will not be the case for the SKO for different reasons. One, one reason is that the data rate is so huge that you cannot send uh, around the world all this data and ask people to have enough uh, um, processing <laughs> uh, power to, to do all that. So in green, there is this science processing center. Uh, there will be two uh, sub-exascale uh, supercomputers, one in Perth and one in Cape Town, that will produce from this raw data a wide uh, variety of uh, observatory data products that will be ready to be analyzed by the scientific community. The quantity of data that will be uh, produced uh, can be extremely big. Uh, they will be kept reasonable, uh, there will be about 700 petabytes per year uh, in total of uh, uh, observatory data products that have to be shared with the community. All this part of uh, the computing uh, component of the observatory is uh, uh, under the complete responsibility of the SKA observatory. The third part, that are the SKA regional centers, it's a network uh, an end-to-end -end partnership because it's something that is being defined and uh, we are really working hard on that uh, because uh, it will be, of course, the SKO will be one partner of this partnership but then all the countries participating to the SKO need to participate to uh, build and operate this network of SKA regional centers. And it's where uh, these observatory data products will be archived, stored, uh, preserved, distributed to the community. Uh, the community will, have, will need to have access to those uh, centers to analyze the data, visualize them, and uh, so on and so forth. Imagine that one cube, an image of SKA, SKA will be a 3D image. Uh, X, Y in terms of position in the sky, but the third dimension is, uh, is the frequency, and one cube can reach um, a size of uh, one petabyte. So also visualizing this kind of data will be, will be a challenge. And these centers will also have to um, uh, allow uh, to uh, reprocess the data to produce advanced data processing. So it's, it's really from uh, typical data challenges to HPC challenges. Uh, among the challenges that I wanted to mention, uh, for, sh for sure there is energy. We are very, very um, careful about uh, sustainability. Um, for this, uh, we, we are trying to develop a co-design uh, um, uh, for, uh, for the SPC, the Science Processing Center, in such a way to have optimized uh, computing infrastructures for the needs that we have in terms of software. As you can see, there is a red arrow showing that the data will, m some parts of the data reduction that was expected to be done in the desert is now moved to these centralized infrastructures, and this indeed is for the reason of reducing the energy consumption in the, in the um, desert. I, can, I could say much more, but I would like to go to leave enough time for, to the other speakers and go to my last slide, in which uh, what I would like to stress is the need of collaboration. Uh, this is a key word. Um, so I hope that I convinced you that um, that the SKO uh, is a is a 
typical um, project uh, that uh, uh, similarly to what we will hear, for instance, from, uh, from Maria about CERN uh, later on, um, need uh, a complex combination of uh, uh, computations and data movement. Uh, to integrate uh, this noise information from uh, spatially distributed sensors, in our case uh, the antenna, uh, through a software platform of distributed services across really a continuum of edge and centralized structures. So the challenges that we have are very common with other communities and now more than ever we need to work with them because the dimension also of our challenges in terms of uh, technical needs but also economical needs, uh, governance needs, uh, need uh, to be uh, addressed with other communities. So we have challenges uh, around the uh, multi-stage workflows. As I said, uh, we produce a very wide vari variety of uh, observatory data produ products. That means that uh, there, is a, uh, there are very different uh, workflows. Uh, and we need to uh, adapt or replace uh, the, le uh, the legacy paradigm of stateless communication versus stateful compute systems. And this is again something in common. Most of these uh, things have been extracted from a recent BDEC white paper that is very wide. So I wanted to show how much the SKO needs um, are reflected in other uh, communities and much wider communities' needs. Uh, and of course, uh, the development of this kind of, uh, of uh, um, uh, collaboration is of interest for uh, a, a wide uh, community, wide uh, range of stakeholders, in particular the SKA regional centers, and we would like to have a, a European dimension, not only a national dimension of these uh, regional centers. Uh, they interest from the astronomers to computer scientists, to people developing software uh, that want to test in uh, distributed uh, infrastructures, to other communities. The, these SKA regional centers should not be just devoted to the SKA, they should be in common with other communities. And it's in this sense that uh, we recently uh, organized together with Maria, we have been working quite a lot on that. You see a picture of the collaboration agreement between uh, that we signed now three years ago, I think, between CERN, SKO, J and Praise. This is a typical example of real collaboration already ongoing and uh, I stop here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chiara. You can already uh, uh, take your seat. Matthias, if you uh, already move to uh, that stage, part of the stage, and take the microphone. Matthias uh, Schramm is the, the next um, presenter from the perspective of user communities uh, from the Earth Observation. Go ahead. Yes, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yes, so my background is Earth observation and I have prepared here now some slides where I want to talk a little bit about where we scientists in the sector of Earth observation are standing at the moment in Europe. Also what uh, first steps we did already for the idea of federating our services to afterwards talk about, uh, well, what still needs to be done because we are definitely not even close uh, where we want to be at the end. Um, the sector of Earth observation, the science of Earth observation has been changed in the last one and a half decades dramatically. In 2008, the USGS, the United States uh, Geological Survey, did open all their databases of uh, satellites free of charge, which meant that suddenly all the scientists in the world were starting using a big amount of data, uh, which also directly meant that um, they were looking for ways of um, centralized storage systems, of uh, centralized or cloud um, and processing systems and so on. And the European Union was m doing the next step in 2014 with a, um, with a flagship project Copernicus. They were launching the first of now already many, many satellites, uh, Sentinel satellites in, in space, which had a completely new idea of available spatial resolution and also repetition rate. That means now we can have 
every few days all over the world new satellite images in a, in a spatial resolution of up to 10 meters. Which also means that again the need of storage systems was rising up dramatically. So we are talking now about needs at least in petabyte scale for doing global analysis with the Earth observation data. Um, this of course cannot be done by private computers and that's why a lot of different SMEs were rising up in Europe that could uh, provide data storage uh, and, and cloud services. Just one example that you might have heard already in this week, the Earth Observation Data Center in Austria. I will not go through that, through that too much because it is just one example of many, but the idea is that uh, the data centers do need now petabyte storage, also maybe access, as in this example, to supercomputing uh, possibilities and also providing then cloud platforms that users can easily reach these, um, 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 well, these um, services. So services like that were just spreading around Europe everywhere. Um, they were not really talking with each other. They were all had the idea of trying to tailor their services to their target users. So that means there was nearly no communication between them. There was no really a standardization between them, uh, which also means that there is not really the way for, for the user communities to grow together. And um, this problem has been seen quite fastish, but not fast enough. Um, and that's why we try to answer, or we, we to, to go the first steps to answer this problem with an um, Horizon 2020 project, which is called OpenEO. Also that you might have heard already in this week sometimes. The idea of that has been that uh, we wanted to implement an, an interface uh, um, well, a standardization interface that uh, users could be able to access different endpoints, different uh, service providers with exactly the same coding. And what exactly that coding is doing was then a translation process at the backend themselves. So that means, in an ideal case, a user could have uh, just implemented one workflow on their local computer and just then say, please uh, process that now in backend one, process that in service provider two, and so on, without really having to switch um, um, then a new code or write a new code and so on. Meanwhile, or even before that, of course, also other regions in the world were not stopping. So in the USA, uh, we had uh, strong competition. So it's already since 2011, 2012, Google was uh, announcing everywhere their Google Earth Engine system, which is the big elephant in the, in the um, Earth observation community. Also, Amazon Web Service was coming as a really big uh, cloud provider. And the SMEs in Europe were more the, well, had more the small ideas. So the, everybody was going for their small or for their uh, reduced user community. But with the idea of OpenEO, we, we had the hope that they could grow a little bit together. And in fact, the project was at least as successful that we were escaping the so-called project trap, that when there's no funding anymore, there is not happening anymore. Um, in fact, we had now several follow-up projects. Only th the three most ones I did print here on this page. The uppest one is oh, um, OpenEO Platform, and after that two that you also might have heard already in this week, Cscale, where also the EGI is participating, and on Monday we had a kickoff for the Intertwin project, where also the EGI is even leading that project. Um, the idea of these and many other projects is to, um, among others, to, to uh, Grow, uh, move on with the idea of OpenEO to really bring it to a federation, to make sure that different uh, s uh, platform providers can federate with each other. Um, meanwhile, of course, still Google and Amazon are all the time around the corner. So still when I am talking with people or with, with researchers, why don't you use a service provider which works, for instance, with OpenEO or, or whatever, Everybody was first had the first question, but we have we have Google. Why should we why should we go to the European small service providers or yeah or even also to the to the already f partly federated idea? Google is doing everything really easy, so why should we do anything? Yes, um, 
And in fact, I mean, I even heard this question this week of EGI. Some, I do not know if this person is in the room, but the question was, uh, why should we use the EGI Federation when we have Amazon App Web Service? Uh, and exactly this, this question is exactly the same question also for the Earth observation sector. Um, and normally our answer is the same that I also heard the answer is Gergely sitting somewhere? I don't know. He gave exactly the same answer. Uh, with, with our idea and also with EGI, we do have at least a new human layer in between the user and the service provider, which means when you have a question, when you have a problem, somebody can help you directly. Um, and uh, at least for the Earth observation sector, there is another answer that specialized providers can also deliver specialized data, which is, for instance, not happening with Google, which is not happening with Amazon Web Service. Um, yes, um, but still, of course, we have a lot of more steps for, the, for, the, for going to a real federation. Um, and meanwhile, also, the European Union is having several programs uh, for, for also trying to solve this issue of also Europe shall come upwards and shall be a global player in this idea of services. This is often, this is now maybe my more personal opinion, still a try and error. The last big idea has been the data and information access services, the diocese, which also had been mentioned at least once in this week, I heard it. Um, the idea of that is that there were several big uh, project uh, consortia um, that were responsible for providing big uh, service providers, big platforms for Earth observation processing. Um, for them, for instance, we also developed some OpenEO access points that they also can be used standardized in a standardized way. And now the funding is over, and the future of these dioceses is, let's say, threatened. Um, which also for me as a user gives me the feeling of a Sisyphus uh, rolling up my rock the mountain. So that means it might be that all the workflows that we were implementing there we have to do somewhere else again. So that means also the, the landscape at the moment at least in Europe is quite short-lived for, for service providers, which is an issue for long term for, uh, for users uh, trying to build up long term uh, both services for, for their customers for instance. Of course I cannot ask now as a user please stop that, that will not be possible, but it might be a way for instance trying to camouflage this problem. This would be maybe now also directly a wish for, for what could happen with, with the EGI. Um, when we would, this is a very first idea with which maybe needs a lot of discussions, but when we would be able to build on top of these services a layer like the EGI Data Hub service, um, which is um, which is then just forwarding my requests to the to the platforms without really me having to care which platform it is then I might not directly notice when one platform is dying. This would be on a tier one level. Um, but uh, for instance, and when it just, just starts, for instance, with a joint uh, check-in service. A tier two level could then be, of course for the future, um, this uh, compute orchestration service, which is then really organizing or allowing me to have the same um, 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 virtual machine, for instance, running on different systems. But here we already have the first big problem again, um, that the, for, at least for the European service providers, it happens normally still, as a user, it is really hard to access the, the data. So there is not really a comfortable way to do so, in contrast, for instance, to the, to the Google system. Um, and the tier three would then be, which I heard in this week also, which might be in the future a plan, really a federated processing. I'm that standing up because I want to, uh, <laughs> to jump in. allow also other uh, the, the third user community to present. Ah, so, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, then I will just just uh, still say that also these small um, entities often still don't have a really good business model, so they are really need a need of. Uh, of, of public funding, and in that moment when it's not existing anymore, then 
it might be a problem. So that is also something for the federation that to, to, uh, to federate maybe some services to figure out if there's a better business model into that. Also, but one last sentence, sorry, also uh, together with, with uh, SMEs. So you were asking the question in the, in the white paper, together with businesses, yes or not? And you said that it is mixed, the answer. My answer is yes, please do so. Yes? Okay. But with thank that last th sentence, th thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Matthias. And please uh, do sit up. And then um, Maria Girona, uh, on behalf of uh, CERN, or I should say the LHC experiments or Open Lab, um, please uh, give your introduction. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, representing uh, here actually the community, let's say, of uh, high energy physics, uh, in particular uh, the European laboratory that uh, is specialized in research in high energy physics is CERN. Uh, it's well known, uh, it's a unique laboratory in terms of uh, opportunities uh, uh, to uh, have an important set of accelerators, uh, which are uh, our uh, way to perform uh, research uh, in the field. Um, the one that is uh, most known is the Large Adron Collider. So what we are talking today here is about uh, how, support, uh, uh, how we support this community, and uh, in particular in the uh, area of uh, computing storage. Now, the LHC is uh, uh, operating today. Um, the, uh, is uh, a science which is an high throughput uh, computing science. Um, and uh, uh, today counts on uh, about uh, a distributed infrastructure of one million core uh, CPU cores and about one exabyte of data. So it's already an exascale science in a way. But what is very important is that um, the program that uh, um, is ahead of us and has got very similar time scales, at least uh, with the one that uh, Chiara uh, was discussing, is the iLuminosity LHC, will be operational in 2029 and will bring uh, about a factor 10 in uh, complexity in more data and more complex data. And you can feel uh, this just by looking at these uh, images that are coming from the uh, one uh, uh, event uh, which uh, uh, has been collected, for instance, in, two in 2018 during the run two, compared, and you see the many tracks that we need to disentangle from the overlapping events which are happening at the LHC at the same time. With respect to one that is expected at the high luminosity LHC, where, of course, the situation is uh, way more complex and the occupancy of the detectors will be extremely important. Um, in terms of computing challenges, so here we are talking about um, important uh, amount of additional uh, uh, computing and storage resources that will help us to have uh, actually um, the capabilities of analyzing this data. And uh, what you see here, I don't know if I can, what you see here is actually the um, um, estimated resource needs in terms of computing and storage for uh, the uh, LHC experiments. So this is an example by Atlas, but there are very similar plots also um, uh, by the CMS experiment. So you can see that within, uh, if we want to stay within the resource envelope that we have, which actually falls in the technology improvement by up to plus 10% or even up to 20%, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we need to have a very um, important uh, strategy for, for uh, uh, research and development. So R&D is important in order to fit into the envelope of resources towards the high luminosity LHC. And this is the first message. So how do we do this? Well, we're looking at many uh, um, different angles, how to uh, basically change um, the way in which we uh, uh, do the data processing uh, uh, in high energy physics. So we are looking at, uh, uh, on one side, uh, um, exploiting with our software 
uh, the new capabilities that are coming from um, uh, uh, heterogeneous architectures, uh, such as uh, GPUs, PJs, but at the same time, how we can uh, leverage on technologies like machine learning in order to uh, re recast, rethink of uh, our uh, um, applications to make use of machine learning and deep learning. We are looking at ways to expand our resources uh, through uh, the use of HPC and clouds. And this is something that is relevant in this discussion today. And uh, um, looking forward, I would like to share with you the strategy, which I think is important and answer some of the questions that uh, have been already coming up in the uh, initial uh, uh, part of this panel. So first of all, and very importantly, um, high energy physics uh, um, wants to um, uh, uh, continue and uh, pursue a program of uh, R&D together and in very strong collaboration with other sciences and uh, related fields. So this is the first important message. The second message is actually about uh, how we want to do this. And uh, um, one important point is that we really would like uh, that uh, our community, together with the close communities like uh, uh, astrophysics, uh, participate into the uh, planning stage of the future research infrastructures. So when you're talking about uh, get, getting input from the users, we believe as a science that this is key. We want to be there and we want to drive together with the, the infrastructures this process. The second part is uh, the development, software develop, development is important, is key. We are going through this uh, convergence of high, high throughput computing uh, with respect to uh, high performance computing, but this is something that we have just started and we are way, uh, we need to develop and we need to, uh, to be um, involved into projects with the community that allow co-design and co-development. AI is important, but again, this is something that we've started, but uh, uh, we want to, uh, um, and we are dedicating resources in order also to understand how AI can play a role in the future with high throughput computing, high, high performance computing, sorry, and of course the use of clouds. So um, to conclude, the last point is about uh, uh, looking, for, looking ahead with the, uh, um, the developments uh, in, uh, in the area of computing. We are aware that the world in the next few years is going to be hybrid. We need to understand how to take advantages of these hybrid models, and in the future also how to take advantages of uh, more disruptive technologies like neuromorphic quantum computing. So uh, from HTC, the path to HPC and more is complicated, and uh, the message here is that doing this together is a very important uh, point for our communities. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. I would now like to invite the other panelists, um, Natalia, uh, Paul, Tiziana, and to check whether the remote participants are really there. Antti from uh, UDOT, can you make yourself uh, heard? Can somebody say if uh, Auntie is connected? And Joe, Joe Wood. There's I'm Auntie. Here, I'm here and I'm connected. Okay, great, thank you. So Joe Wood, EuroHPC, Auntie, uh, Persula, uh, UDAT, and then we have the two Ferraris, I would say, yeah. <laughs> why, why are they sitting next to each other? Tichara from EGI. <laughs> Paul from uh, uh, Jean and Natalia, uh, uh, complete right, um, left for you, uh, open air. So uh, we have heard, um, yes, we are complete, right? So first, thanks for the panelists remotely and uh, live here to participate in this, um, uh, in this uh, panel. Um, we have heard uh, a couple of user communities, research communities, research infrastructures, uh, 
uh, give um, a picture of what they need in the future. We have heard FOTIS um, uh, plea uh, for more coordination uh, between the uh, e-infrastructures. So I ju just want to go one by one if you want to respond to this, um, uh, especially this, uh, the, the combination of both, uh, the, the, the requirements you hear from the user communities and the, uh, the plea for more coordination. And there must be a connection there because coordination per se is not the goal, coordination must serve a purpose to help science, help researchers uh, uh, better. So please, uh, I start with you, Tiziana, on behalf of EGI, if, if you can give your first uh, response to that. So the experience uh, of the EGI Federation has been that in the early times, uh, back in 2000, was a very independent uh, work in development, in the development stage. And over the first 10 years, we had the bilateral agreements. We started with uh, agreements with praise on a project-based uh, fashion. Um, more recently, we joined the project uh, with UDAT. That was one of the first implementation projects of the European Open Science Cloud, which was augmented by agreements with OpenAir and Gian. And that was uh, the foundation for a growing collaboration, which is now nicely framed uh, in the context of new projects in the European Open Science Cloud domain. And uh, we have been cooperating in a bit a ad hoc manner, depending on uh, scopes of projects and uh, perhaps in a bilateral way, sometimes not fully embracing uh, the potential that working together would, uh, would offer. So the um, three areas where we definitely see challenges but also joint opportunities um, are to first uh, coordinate more our research and development programs for the coming years, uh, where for some of our infrastructures and surely EGI working uh, with scientific communities and co-design is very important. Um, there was a question, um, what's the difference between Amazon and the EGI Federation? There is a quite fundamental difference. Uh, the EGI Federation is research data centers, and we have been uh, created as a federation because the data of the scientific communities is federated. So co-design and cooperation, making sure that the innovation uh, needed by scientific communities is also reflected in uh, joint programs, which also have a, a focus on deployment, is very important. We also need the now, I think, responding to one point that was raised as a challenging question by thought is, do we need cooperation or also integration? We already have successful cases where integrated efforts in delivery of services have proven to be very good. So in the USC future, there is a lot of effort bringing the infrastructures together. But we like to say also around AEI and collaboration uh, with research infrastructures, projects like ARC, where we defined with scientific communities, with Jean and other infrastructures, UDOT, the blueprint for federated AEI. These were quite fundamental and successful um, milestones that we achieved, and there is more potential around that. So yes, the delivery is also an opportunity, and the training coordination with the scientific communities, it's a necessity to keep the capital, the expertise, and not to work in silos, multiplicating interfaces to use the communities where it makes sense. It's not always necessary. We have a lot of complementarity as well, but there are also many opportunities for joint forces. And finally, my last remark about the infrastructure forum. Um, it would be very nice to make a leap and also probably we should ask what would be the role of user communities in this forum to make sure that we walk hand in hand in this journey. Thank you very much, Tiziana. So I hear three things, uh, co-development, uh, joint development, uh, joint innovation strategy maybe. Uh, I hear um, uh, co-delivery um, and I hear um, uh, joint or coordinated outreach to uh, communities. Let's go to some uh, other live um, uh, structure here. Well, you can use that microphone or this one. Uh, I invite Jean to uh, express uh, thoughts on this. Paul, please. Thank you very much. Hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, 
I think firstly, uh, it's great to be here at, at the conference and we've heard some uh, lovely case studies uh, from user communities over the past couple of days where the collaboration in our community is already active and the results we've achieved on a European and a global scale. So I think we, we do need to recognise that and in Fotis's presentation I think we, we saw some recognition that uh, these things are happening. But uh, equally, uh, not to be naive and hear the call, there is an opportunity for improved collaboration amongst the infrastructures. Um, if we think about the, the communities of users, um, which is common in all of our strategies and our values as the community that we support, uh, we should have that user-centric view. Uh, and looking at our, our service portfolios and a seamless end-to-end -end, uh, experience for those users should be the ultimate nirvana. Um, there are some perhaps easier areas for us to look at, first of all. Um, we've heard in the presentation already around uh, Earth observation and exploring commercial clouds, community <coughs> clouds, how that experience from a user can be differentiated and when perhaps one case is more appropriate than the other. Um, from the infrastructures, uh, they're managed by different e infrastructures. So there's a nice case example if we look at uh, our service portfolios, how they complement, and from a user perspective, they can have an easier choice of when they should choose a particular product or service. Um, so, in principle, we hear the call uh, from FOTIS and the ERG, um, and I think there's some opportunities amongst our community to, to respond and uh, engage in some uh, increased collaborative activities. Okay, thanks, Paul. That's uh Two. <laughs> Let's move to uh, party number three, open air. Uh, Natalia, please. Okay, so I think, first of all, this is one of the very good discussions and opportunities for us to discuss. I have to say that I felt at some disadvantage when I heard, you know, we are open scholarly communication and open science, and all of the presentations were about PETA scales and HPC and HTC. So what I do understand that this is, you know, there is a need for collaboration, but then at the end of your slides, everyone, you talked about the science, people doing science, and then it's about communicating. So don't forget that there is this point of open air and, uh, and, and infrastructures like open air that we're doing open science, that we are coming at, at, at the end or during the research data management, uh, supporting people to do open science. So yes, there is a complementarity. And um, I think, you know, even this example to me shows that once we are able to collaborate and to share our services and to make everyone uh, aware of the services that we offer as infrastructures, uh, there is only uh, a gain, especially from the, from the users. And so, yes, uh, a collaboration, uh, as uh, Fort is put it uh, forward, is, is uh, I think, uh, it's a high priority on the agenda. Okay, thank you very much, Natalia. I want to move to the two remote participants. First, uh, Antti, uh, from uh, the EUDAT perspective. Uh, you cannot say no uh, anymore, right? So, <laughs> coordination is, uh, is useful, isn't it? Well, indeed, and, and thank you for inviting me to the panel and, and allowing the remote participation. Um, yes, I, I do agree that, that these re recommendations and ideas for closer collaboration with, with all e-infrastructures e uh, is beneficial. And, and I, I think having a structured forum for this collaboration uh, would be a great benefit for all including the, the users. Uh, I, from, I, I also want to comment uh, on, the, on the user community uh, presentations, which were very good examples, thank you. So, so in the EU data infrastructure, we are focused on, on making data fair and, and uh, providing or supporting good research data management practices uh, for all communities. And, and some, something we see very clearly now recently is, is the uh, need for combining this type of long-term uh, data storage and data repositories with really the high-end computing, as was, for example, obvious in the SKAO presentation. So I, I think this is an area where, an example of an area where more collaboration with e-infrastructures e would really bring benefits. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm very positive about continuing this discussion from the EU perspective. Thank you. 
Thank you, Auntie. We didn't prepare this, but you uh, sort of paved the way for uh, the last uh, participant uh, to this panel, uh, talking about uh, uh, the need for uh, m more computing or high-performance computing. Uh, Joe, could you uh, t give your impression on, uh, and opinion on what has been discussed until now? So, uh, I suppose I'm going to base my, opinion, my, my contribution in two, two parts. One is, firstly, I want to welcome all the presentations from the user communities that are present today. Um, one of the EURHPC joint undertaking goal, goals, obviously, is to uh, procure uh, supercomputing power and quantum computing power in the future for user communities across Europe. Um, we are uh, we have two aspects, two aspects of the procuring aspect, and then once we have the machines online and available, we also will be launching uh, different access calls for European scientists to use them. So um, I very much was interested in hearing the, the, the different case models uh, that, that were provided. What is slightly different from us is that we are providing the, the access. Uh, the, but it's up to the scientists in whatever capacity they want to work with, whether they're collaborating via uh, scientific, academic, uh, or other organized structures to, to, to apply uh, for, for, for time on the machines. And uh, they, their, their submissions will be peer reviewed, very much along the, the model that Prace initiated and that we are going to continue to use. Um, there is no question, we are open to collaboration and we welcome applications uh, to our machines, assuming, of course, that we have enough time on our machines. I want to also remind you that uh, all our machines are up online, so there are five now, three more to come by the end of next year, and then we hopefully will have an exascale supercomputer uh, by, the, by 20, probably 2024, 25, and five, three, no, and a few more mid-range machines, we are going to have more and more capacity here in Europe, uh, which will be shared between uh, the national usage and the EU usage. So the other question we have, uh, which is why, is, is how, how to, what kind of projects will, will, will get what kind of access time and when. And we will uh, ha we'll be launching, for example, in November, an extreme scale call, which will be a regular call as well for extremely large uh, projects of extremely large uh, data processing needs. Um, so the other element which I welcome is that from the user co colleagues is that they would like to be involved in our discussions in terms of co-design of, of future uh, HPC infrastructures that are managed by UHPC joint undertaking. I'm not, I can't talk for the national infrastructures, of course, that would be a separate discussion. Um, and the answer is yes, we would also like to, we would like to develop a better dialogue and a dialogue with the users. Uh, as you're probably all aware, we're a very new organization. So our first job was to procure and procure we are doing. Our second job um, uh, is to launch RNI projects to try and build up the application software algorithm support around the machines, and of course, to develop centers of excellence. And let's not forget, to uh, Tiziana's point, the competence aspects of high performance computing in Europe. But it's also uh, to grow our users groups. So what we will be looking at is obviously to talk to, if, I, if you don't mind calling you the usual suspects, we would like to talk to you, of course, but we would also like to see how we can increase the different user communities that will need uh, more computing power now and in the future. So that's something we're working with our expert groups, so the INFRAG and REAG expert groups that are, are appointed by our governing board um, and are, will provide us advice on how we go about doing that. And this is my last point, I think, in terms of collaboration. We obviously will collaborate and talk to everybody, but we can't formally collaborate with any other 
infrastructures because formally if we do we'd have to check with our governing board that are made up, made up of the member states and the European Commission. So from a governance perspective it's not that we're being negative to Fortis's point and I take it personally but it's because we have a completely governance structure to other infra e infrastructures so therefore we have to uh, think very carefully and, and convince uh, our governing board that it makes sense. Uh, and at this point, we, we still need, so my question back to you on the collaboration is, collaboration on what? Because at the moment, as someone already said, it's, it's, what is it for? It's no point just collaborating if we're not actually clear what it's about. So I would challenge you back a little bit for to, to say, exactly what do, you, what do you want to collaborate on? And I would actually listen to the user groups very carefully to see what kind of answers they would give. Um, and that, by the way, applies to the user forum. I mean, no, no reason why the, your forum of access forum that you're talking about, no reason why you shouldn't have it. But I can't, at this point, I do not have the mandate from the governing board to say that we could be part of it or not part of it. It's something that we need to think about. And for that, we need to, we would just like to sit in these conversations, listen, and consider what 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 how we can add value. But to be honest, I think we would probably want a very uh, lightweight um, um, setup rather than anything formal. Uh, and I'll be that, that that I don't think is a big secret. Um, I think I've covered all the points that you might want to make. And of course, I'm happy for questions. Thank you, uh, Joe. Um, and you uh, give rise to the uh, ch a challenging um, uh, perspective, namely uh, collaborate. Uh, what for? Uh, well, I have heard, at least uh, at some uh, in, in some of the uh, user communities um, uh, talks, uh, things like uh, uh, merging borders between HTC, HPC, uh, accelerates. You name it. Um, uh, user communities will consume anything that uh, fits their um, fits their uh, scientific goals. So that, for me, would be already a very good reason to start um, uh, these discussions. And I'm very much aware access mechanisms are different. Governance might be standing in the way, but I've promised to not use the word governance in this uh, panel discussion, so I will not. Uh, for practical purposes, I want to give you, Chiara, the floor to, and, and then I allow you to just leave to catch a plane to, to respond briefly to what you have heard from the uh, e infrastructures. Uh, Maria also will leave with me. So oh, sorry, you, you too. You, you, <laughs> both, please take the floor and then uh, we continue with uh, uh, a thin panel. But uh, yes. okay, My please. Apologies again for the situation and uh, thanks a lot. It has been uh, extremely interesting. It's a pity that my flight uh, is so early. Uh, of course, on collaboration, all the technical part, the R&D, the co-design, this we have heard. I have two very, uh, thanks, I have two very practical points. One are costs, because when we plan for, for instance, the future centers, the community is asked to uh, quantify how uh, it will, uh, so how much it will cost in terms of CAPEX and of OPEX. And the community, the scientific community, is very often not ready to answer to that question alone. In particular, when we want to work together with other communities. And so collaborating in uh, uh, having proper estimates of costing, I think that it would be, and, uh, and business models, it would be extremely useful. And the second point is about uh, uh, the access model. So very operational, from the operational point of view, the access model to infrastructures uh, adapted to the different kind of needs of different communities. So these are two very, very, two, two very pragmatic and not technical questions, but I think that are important to be taken into account. Yeah. So, costing and access models. Yes, Maria, do you want to add? Maybe comment? I can add. Uh, trying to answer the question, what for? I think that the third point is uh, also scale. So, um, exascale is going to be something that uh, we haven't exercised. Um, using machines effectively at very large scales um, is something that uh, will not come just like that. We will need to do, uh, to develop together the tools. We will need to understand how data um, can be um, uh, moved, uh, 
uh, towards uh, the uh, centers um, data that actually belongs to the uh, research infrastructure because, uh, sorry, yeah, the research units, the, the users, uh, because it gets produced there. We will need to understand the uh, mechanisms of uh, authorization, authentication. Um, there's a lot of work to do. There, are, there have been a lot of demonstrators already, uh, which uh, of course have paved the way and are very important there, and many of these are done uh, in communities like this one, with DGI. Um, but the scale is something that we need to work on, and this is uh, the reason why when we talk, we talk about uh, uh, being a part of the process. Uh, so being uh, um, um, there to co-develop the tools that we will need as data intensive science in order to access and take the benefit and use the machines effectively. So, and the word effectively is very important because this means that you need to do development and you need to do um, software development. Um, so um, there's a gap um, that will allow us then at a certain point to do uh, the, um, and achieve the effective use, but this gap it means uh, uh, people, uh, expertise uh, um, that needs to be coming together from both the domain uh, experts and uh, infrastructure experts, in my opinion. Okay, thanks, thanks. So scale, and we also know that uh, uh, whenever we reach a next scale, we will encounter new problems. Uh, I, I will allow you to, to leave. Uh, th thank you for uh, participating. Uh, don't forget to pass by Magdalena for um, a little present. <laughs> and that's spoiling the surprise for the remaining panelists, of course. So uh, a, a small round of applause, a big round of applause for the ones that are leaving. And we'll continue uh, because I feel that we should uh, do justice to the fact that we have um, all infrastructures at the table, right? So I want to conti uh, continue at the table virtually and live. Uh, um, there seems to be enough ground to, um, uh, to, to come together. Um, is there any idea on how we should organize this? Um, and um, again, I'm not uh, soliciting for a governance, but just for a practical way forward to, uh, to do this. Any comments? Who wants to uh, give a suggestion? May, may I just yes, Joe. Chip, chip in? It's funny, sorry, apologies, but um, um, we're getting a delay between what we can see on the screen and what we're saying. So if it okay. sounds a bit odd, I apologize. Um, I just wanted to say that one area where, without any formality at all, I want to just raise the point is that as, a gov as an EU body, we have to develop work plans for funding. And I'm glad that the last speaker mentioned the issue around costs, around access, and around scale. In fact, two speakers, in fact, the, late, the colleagues who had to leave. Um, we are constantly juggling those, those three uh, issues and one of the things you need to be aware of is every year we come up we have to convince our uh, paymaster the the, the, the payers uh, i.e. the commission and the member states uh, about the projects we want to work on in the coming years and so one area that we would welcome not necessarily in an organized way but is is input into our work plan so if you've got good ideas or you've got collaborative projects which obviously link to HPC that could help in the development of application software um, or anywhere, anything else related to that, then we would be grateful to, we're very happy to hear from you and you're very welcome. To, it's, we've, I'd be very happy to hear from you personally if you want to contact me directly uh, to see where we can pursue things. And I also, just to bear in mind, we are already talking to CERN uh, about certain ideas. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. And they have to, I also have to disappear, so oh, um, okay. apologies. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Joe, for participating um, and for your contribution. Uh, we can unfortunately not hand over uh, the present virtually, so uh, another solution needs to be found for that. Um, thank you. So if you disconnect, uh, 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 I hope to see you at some occasion uh, again. Um, well, 
uh, so this is an invitation to at least, uh, as I would call it, share our uh, roadmaps, development plans, which I would then say falls under the category of, sh well, cooperation, coordination on R&D, yeah? on, on innovation, I would, uh, I would say. Um, but back again to the question, what would be a lightweight way to start this? What, uh, or what would be at all a way to start uh, this, uh, this closer uh, uh, collaboration? Any suggestions? Matthias. I guess it works, yeah. Um, from, the, from the pure user perspective, I have to say we are normally really funding driven. So we can only do that, realize that, that we are funded for. And when we have normal use case projects for whatever happens, then normally there is no really funding in developing infrastructure in that. Uh, it might be working since I learned now also does e that EGI has a kind of a, a doorstep in the, in, the, in the funding agency to also explain them that the specific amount of, of funding also should go into exactly that. That we can also at least uh, put some effort into bringing our software, our workflows into, uh, well, into e-infrastructure. Because at least what can I, I can say from the Austrian perspective for Earth observation, we are using that what is there in that very moment because we don't have time to do anything else. And when we don't get extra money for doing that, then we don't. Okay. Um, I'm personally um, uh, always very careful about doing something because there is money lying around. I would reverse the order. Uh, you want to do something and find the money, um, yeah. or have the money. But OK, that's, uh, that's the ideal world. Uh, Natalia. Yes, I think you know, I, I will say something that Paul uh, mentioned uh, in, in, in lunch and coffee break. So I think you know, one tangible way to start our collaboration would be to learn you know, what services we are providing. Uh, so you know, for, for example, for open air, there is uh, open science. We, we are offering services that most probably, uh, at some point, your users will be using, but uh, maybe you know you 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 you're not aware. Same would be for EGI for Jean. So so getting you know our portfolio of services and and learning from each other would be a first thing. Then the other thing that uh, you know based on services also is uh, the the service provision and how we offer the services, and this is related to the business models and to the, to, to the access. And how are these services, for example, are, are all interlinked with a you know, common or federated AAI? This is something that we can very tangibly work because this is, at the end of the day, this is what you know, the users will be uh, wanting. They, they want as, as much as you know, not common access models, not common policies, but uh, a limited set of access models and policies, and they, you know, and then what we also have is each of these infrastructures we have national or regional or thematic nodes, and the idea is that whatever we are doing at the European level, you know, it should be trickled down to uh, to the national level. So, learning from each other, and now we hear about these uh, national EOSC um, um, initiatives. And I think, you no, know, this is, you know, the e-infra, the national e-infras are, in my opinion, at the core or of producing these, these national initiatives, EOSC initiatives. So, you know, apart from community building, ap apart from, the, you know, the RD, the roadmap to saying, you know, how can we align our strategies or how can we complement our strategies, um, and this was actually uh, Paul's idea. Uh, it's, uh, you know, start uh, some, some more tangible services. Thank you for bringing in these yes. perspectives. Can I and especially the, uh, the national perspective. Uh, I, I would return uh, it, by the way. I think doing this uh, right on the national level helps doing it right on the European level. But Paul, you want to add to this? I, I think perhaps to, to offer in my own direct words, to, to recognize that in our communication flows already that we have some quite established ways of working. If you look at the constitution of EGI, the constitution or the governance of, 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 of Jean, we all have national touch points, uh, local language support and understanding of the characteristics of things that are operating there. So 
those are very much required in existence and successful. We also have, speaking on behalf of, of Jean, we have a team uh, that support particularly user communities. So the panellists from, from CERN that's left recently, we're in regular discussion and dialogue to make investments in our network and infrastructure to support that next step in the, uh, in the LHC activities. So we've made those investments in a position of readiness. So there are things that, that, are, that are working there, but how we then add to this recipe uh, and, and the components, perhaps amongst the, the e-infrastructures on a pan-European basis, we don't have that regularity of communication flow. Uh, and I think that's perhaps the gap that we should embrace. Um, and I would uh, characterize or propose that we do that on a very lightweight and informal basis. We are, if you measure us, small organizations, um, subject to, to quite uh, demanding funding. We've heard all about the growth, uh, and, and because of that growth, we need to make the investments in infrastructure, services, and solutions. We can't spend so much on, on manpower and, and spending our time traveling and talking. It's wrong for the environment, wrong for being effective. So whatever we do to complement this, we should be agile and effective and efficient in the way that we do that. So something lightweight would be uh, my proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, Auntie, I see you uh, nodding. Yes, and thanks. Uh, so uh, I can comment both, both the previous speakers because I... I to a very large extent agree with Natalia and, and Paul. So um, I, I think we can uh, start with, with indeed learning even more about our services and, and actions of the different e-infrastructures. And this can then on, on one hand help improving the focus of individual e-infrastructures, but more importantly uh, can help us collaboratively uh, close any gaps in the landscape so that, that some of the ideas that are mentioned here as well. And, and, uh, and then I agree on this uh, suggestion by Paul that why not start in a lightweight manner, see where it leads to, and, and if there are uh, more needs then that we need to address later on. That would be my preference. Okay, thanks, uh, Antti. Um, in view of time, and well, to sort of close where I began, <laughs> <laughs> I want to give uh, Tiziana uh, the last uh, perspective uh, or a chance to, uh, on the perspective that we have just sketched a lightweight coordination um, to start with. Um, that's good, I think, but maybe um, uh, um, there's more needed to that, so please. Well, I think uh, today is very nice to see that uh, there is a common recognition. This is already a very important um, uh, milestone. Perhaps uh, for the coming December ERG workshop, the infrastructures that want to support um, this uh, lightweight body for cooperation uh, can come to ERG, perhaps to present what would be a lightweight approach. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should give ourselves a bit of homework so that now that we have understood the need or the potential, we can have a concrete uh, uh, pathway to address it. And I'd like also to raise uh, perhaps another area which uh, this year and in the last uh, couple of years um, uh, can also provide a new cases where infrastructures can come together under situations of global emergency, like for example COVID. There were a lot of initiatives uh, individually undertaken of the infrastructure to improve the accessibility of data. We've open air very much engaged and also the research infrastructures. Other initiatives mobilizing computing and uh, giving more support. So there is really plenty of opportunity and also our needs of society push the infrastructures to be collaborative. So I hope that uh, the lightweight uh, Cooperation can then also lead to more ambitious uh, cooperation programs. And um, having a research and development with the scientific communities, I think, is a strong glue for all of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I realize that um, I haven't given the audience any chance to, uh, to reflect, but um, Let's do that to make up for my uh, failure in this respect. I see your uh, hand uh, raised. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, but you want to be heard, I suppose. No, just, I just wanted to make a point on 
coordination. So I very much like the discussion. I just want to make a remark that usually how we develop infrastructure is very much um, stretched on technology line. We try to stretch technology to develop infrastructure and we try to follow technology roadmap to develop infrastructure. And similarly, on the other side, you have research roadmaps, you know, uh, two years, three years, four years, five year research roadmaps on what you would like to accomplish. And what happens is that when you have a mature technology roadmap, you try to map your research onto it rather than other way around. And I think the this needs to be synchronized in a sense that the infrastructure development should be tightly coupled to what research communities want to achieve. Um, and then we can make an argument that there are some communities on the table, but these are very big communities. Earth observation, uh, high energy physics, SKR, very big communities. They are very well funded, but there are a lot more communities. Their representation is not heard because they're not very big or not very well funded, but um, the infrastructure and the communities, the, the communities might not want to follow what the technology roadmap is. It should be the other way around. And I think that should be, should bring coordination much more closer. I mean, yeah, that's a viewpoint. Thank you. You uh, bring in, uh, of course, a, a bit of the, the bias that we had in selecting the, uh, the user communities, uh, the, the RIs. Uh, any um, response uh, from any of you of the panelists on this? Uh, reaction. Uh, so in, in having users uh, today, first we wanted to have national perspectives, international perspectives and also communities that can blend open science data and different HPC infrastructures, HTC cloud. And, um, and indeed, uh, <coughs> maybe what we call the long tail of science or the communities of practice are very difficult to, to reach out um, individually and these have also problems in being heard and have the structure to reach out to the infrastructures. So this is where the bridge is missing today. And um, thanks for this question. There is uh, an opportunity to, to consider that um, all of us have national governance, so we have national members. So the strength of a European or international infrastructure rests on the national pillars we all have in open science, networking, uh, data infrastructures, computing infrastructures. And um, the ability to serve those communities also demands that we, at a national level, cooperate well and reach out to those communities which are active nationally, which otherwise don't have really a voice on the European landscape. So. Um, it's quite challenging, it's very useful. I can bring the experience of EGI. Uh, we have mentioned in a number of presentations this week how successful some communities of practice, which are very m small, can be when they have a long-term partnership with the infrastructures. This has proven to be very, very successful in many scientific domains. We should do this more, and also by being more coordinated nationally. N Natalia, you brought this up, I don't know if you have also ideas of that. But it's a, it's a strength we haven't explored uh, so far extensively. Okay, thank you. Um, I, yeah, I Paul, own. please. I didn't see your hand raised. Thank you. Um, we'd also just like to, to offer something to, to respond to that. Um, as Jean, we run a program called the Jean Community Program, um, and we try and reach out to all different thematic disciplines and users. So uh, I think just last week we had a, a performing arts workshop in Tallinn, so very much focused on the performing arts community. Uh, we are, uh, well, we've been running now for about a year a, a task force on e-health because we've heard from the community at large this is an area of interest. So we try to create these platforms uh, and areas for the community to speak up and say, hey, this is our challenge, this is our need and then for the infrastructures to respond to that and consider that in their, their roadmaps and challenging industry solutions to, to build those solutions. Perhaps as an, as an opportunity, uh, we amongst ourselves as the infrastructures uh, need to just share our touch points with the user communities and share that knowledge. Um, yeah, if you think about scales, if, if you total up the number of staff within our organisations and the number of users that are out there, it's very much biased the, the, the wrong way around. So we need to be as efficient as possible in through those national touch points, our, our partners in, in country, our, our end members, or other members, we work with those effectively. So it's, 
the, the challenge is effective communication flows and sharing that knowledge. Um, so we'll try and respond to that challenge always and, and, and be better and communicate better. I think there are some established mechanisms already and, and I would encourage you to talk to me later about the community program if your community feels under, underserved. Okay, thank you very much. Now, really in view of time, another session will start, I think, in uh, T minus uh, five uh, seconds or so. Um, I would uh, like to close uh, this session um, uh, and let's not forget that we indeed have some homework and I like the idea to try and have some concrete proposal for the ERG meeting uh, uh, at the end of this uh, year. Uh, I'd like to thank the panelists uh, for contributing, both Auntie remotely and uh, the four of you here. So thanks for your contribution. <laughs> and I've been instructed now to give uh, the microphone to, uh, to you, Magdalena. Thank you. So uh, before everybody leaves, uh, this is uh, unfortunately the last uh, plenary of the conference, even though the conference continues until tomorrow, this is the last chance to meet uh, all together. So we would like to make a couple of uh, announcements and final remarks. So um, if I can get the right slide, please. Yes. So there was a competition on VUVA for uh, the best photo, so everybody had a chance to, to, uh, to cast their vote. Uh, and the best photo is uh, Real Life Intertwins by Renato Santana, so congratulations Renato. Um, there was also a competition for the best poster. Um, I don't know how, uh, but we ended up in a lock, uh, and all the posters got the same number of votes. So I suggest that uh, I would like to keep you here, but after we uh, f finish this session, the first one uh, will run to registration desk and will also get the prize. <laughs> um, so, uh, so this, so we will soon uh, come to an end with uh, the uh, EGI conference 2022 in Prague. Uh, but uh, of course, next year there will be EGI conference 2023. We don't know yet uh, where this is going to happen. So please uh, follow us uh, through the subscribe to our newsletter, follow us through our communication channels to, uh, to get the latest information. Um, if you, I very much doubt that, but if you still don't know what EGI is, what our strategy is and why to, uh, why to use our services, remember that there is a desk uh, with all the printed material, so please grab your coffee, uh, copy, <laughs> uh, and later also coffee. Um, um, we, will, uh, uh, we will open a poll or a final kind of feedback survey. So please go, remember to go to VOVA and uh, let us know what you think about the conference, what you like, what you didn't like, what you would uh, like to see more next year. We would really appreciate your feedback. It will be open until Monday next week. Um, okay, uh, I think, yes, uh, information about the presentations and posters that will be available in VUVA for the next two months and after that they will be transferred to Indigo. So if you missed something, you will be able to still catch up later on. Uh, and now I would really like to thank uh, the local organizers, uh, our uh, federation um, members, CESNET. So Radovan Igliar would like to say a couple of words from... On behalf of CESNET, please Radovan. So, uh, I'm very happy that you managed to meet here in Prague and that we could co-host this event, uh, which uh, I uh, see it was really uh, fruitful and very productive. Uh, uh, I hope we will see you again somewhere else uh, and that you, that you enjoyed Prague and both and that the weather was well. It's getting uh, hotter, so maybe you can enjoy better weather today than yesterday. Uh, I hope you had mainly had this time for discussions and for the for for these meetings around because, as I understand, this is the best uh, way how to discuss the future of uh, and the work of the community. So thank you. Uh, also, I would like to thank to Gwen Frank and Magdalena Bruce uh, because uh, we work 
for more than a half a year, maybe longer, on this organization, and it was really nice cooperation. And thank you, and big applause for them, please. Thank you, Radovan. Uh, thank you, Miroslav, also, uh, and uh, and uh, da -da. and all the CESNET colleagues. Um, we would also like to thank the program committee. Uh, the organizing committee, I will not name specific people because, uh, believe it or not, there was a lot of people involved in the organization. But again, I would really like to thank uh, Gwen Frank here, uh, our communications team member who was uh, behind, who was the great, great brain behind the organization. So thanks a lot, Gwen. <laughs> Big applause for Gwen. And that's about it. Now you can have uh, the coffee and copy maybe of the material. Thank you. Up, oh, please. So of course I want to hold you for a moment. Uh, this is a surprise for you, Magdalena. So I know the people in the communication team don't want uh, gifts, but I want to thank you for for this, Gwen. Please. This is for you. Big thanks. And to Ilaria, thanks for your patience with, uh, with latest slides and all the rest. <laughs> and uh, Arian, if you allow me, um, I want to thank uh, the colleagues from Open Air, Jean, UDAT, The War Online, RHPC. It has been a pleasure. It's very challenging because of the busy agendas to have you here, but I really hope that um, we can make a future now that the pandemic is over, we can be more together and be inspired. Thank you very much. Coffee. <laughs> Drinks.